Alright, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarian. Recent Tartarians. 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 Recent Tartarians.
Oh my God. I'm insane. I just love that. I just can't help myself, but yes, I was just thinking, you know, five times the length of a TikTok for an intro alone, just to flex, but welcome. And you're to giving the a live stream. The people who have their notifications turned on, you gave them a minute to uh, just pull over that's, to the side of the That's road. why. And I know it sometimes takes my friends a minute longer to get their mini disc player, their beanie, their, their, their Japanese wooden clog sandals all together for the trip, for the adventure that is their day. You know, we're the guys that take a little bit longer, but we're there more prepared with our solar paneled back. Andreas and- says five minutes after texting me saying, hey, want to hop on this? No, yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah. I, 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 this is we're known as the Minutemen that can have uh, both positive and negative connotations depending Ouch. on whether you're Elliot or uh, Paul Revere, you know? You know? I like that. Ouch. That hurts. That hurts all of the new, new English. But okay, Stefan. Stefan is here with us again. And by the way, uh, I have not introduced yet Jake Parsons. Jake Parsons, who is a good friend, an amazing social media influencing TikToker. He's got a pretty big channel. If you're not following him already, you should go over there and check it out because he's doing not just shaking his tits. You know, he's like he tells you the, <laughs> tells you how the world is. Yeah. But he's also uh, a firefighter and amongst other things, you know, like he plays music. So, dude, it's really I'm stoked you're here. I've been trying to make it happen for a while. So I'm glad you made it. How's it going? <laughs> dude yeah it, it's good to be here you've been busy man nobody's putting out more content than you you rival me on tiktok and i'm doing it in 30 seconds but you're doing it <laughs> three hour segments i don't know where you find the time but yeah man it's it's good to be here dude it, it's crazy uh the last weekend has been i want to say like the least videos because i didn't do that many videos this weekend i did i guess i did i did sunday too but yesterday i didn't do a video earlier this morning i was gonna do a video earlier but it's just been impossible to keep up with myself and then there's also the world around us mm-hmm. is getting crazier all the time trying to help my friend start his bank account had my bank account deleted got my bank account back finally monday like by the end of the day Chris deleted Dude, it was very Soviet. Yeah, it was strange. And I think it had something to do with the fact that I was trying to help, you know, people in other countries that, you know, like Nigeria, they don't want everyone to have uh, because it's the thing is expats can go anywhere and get a bank account and there's digital stuff in England and stuff. But the moment you help somebody do that, who's not from outside of that system, who's not designed to be a privileged person, they start to freak out at you. That's what it seems like. Well, it's like like. Matt Damon in the the code to Elysium and the rate of, is it really just a string of digits or um... if crypto was what it, they tell us it is, then that would be the utility of it would be right. to transfer crypto to that dude. Right. Did you guys, what's the name of the kid? Um, Alex Jones receiving $9 million of crypto right at the last minute. Yeah. Angel they, they gave him the documents. I think it was salty cracker. That's my opinion. <laughs> what yeah. was the name? As whole, uh, yeah. The guy he raked it in for a minute. Just, no one was in his space competing. I'm trying Speaking to remember. Which, so okay. you, you did the pleasure of introducing us, but this is the our lovely host and wise and all-knowing <laughs> leader. My mentor, even though I'm probably 10 years his senior. Um, That's because the time is he, backwards. He hacked the paywall when he was eight years old. And instead of he forming is, his own version YouTube of PayPal. Jesus age. <laughs> no, no, he's uh, manages to dabble into the edges of what would be classified and or... Um, you know, straying into it's weird. I am realizing that content. classified recently is, shifted to this format. So here we are. Classified is less and less of a real thing. It's privileged now. It's privileged. That's all there is. Because there's a lot of people that are privileged to know certain things. And then you don't even realize or recognize how many people are not privileged to have that access to that information. But they know it's it's very 1984. There's some people that need to know between the hours of nine to five that two plus two can equal four. But most people, they're scared of still knowing those things. I mean, it's it's just crazy. I don't know. Um, maybe, though, just for the sake of reality, do you guys want to, like, kind of give some background into how you guys got into being crazy with me? Like, how did you decide that you were uh, questioning the narrative? How about let's start with that? Well, I'll, I'll, bro, I'll go, you go really first, brief. Bro. This is my, oh, my third episode that where Andreas has thankfully pulled me in. I, I must have made enough clever super chats that he uh, wanted to uh, – battle wits with me or, or see if I was just a bot or something. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I've always assumed that Andreas is operating on behalf of some sort of DOD DHS uh, slush fund for, you know, preventing information hazards from getting out there too far as Kyle. Wouldn't Hill that us, be so. great? That would really help. Someday, someday we'll get there. But um, <laughs> I, I, again, I'm just thankful. And I, 
to be included in the conversation. And after having uh, watched my social life and uh, yoga teaching community just kind of dwindle over the past few years, this feels like a nice way to reconnect. And um, I'm kind of like Encyclopedia Brown. I know way too much about a lot of random things, N not the same way technically savvy. I brought up the idea of degaussing and Andreas throws out there, oh, there's ferro fluid liquid systems. And I'm going, this okay, title me, but... comes from you. The title, uh, Indian burpees or sorry, British ah. burpees inspired Indian yoga. So, how, I mean, that's sorry, I drop bits is kind of my online moniker. And the idea is similar to 100 Monkey. I just looked up his um TikTok and it seems like he sits, stands or sits and delivers to the camera little bits of truth and Dude. um, trying to help consumers of this media in an era where even on on uh infowars.com or band.video as soon as the video is five days old you gotta keep scrolling to find it there's no way to unless you have access to the mechanism so talking about adding timestamps to these conversations but being simple and doing one thing and doing it well and delivering truth um on tiktok you get maybe a chance to show someone 10 or 15 videos before they get truly distracted or bored if they're not interested <laughs> in the content um, YouTube, you tend to get a, it's like porn. You get a, a thumbnail and a, a title. So I mean, they, that's where the original clickbait came from. Uh, it's no longer jailbait, but yeah. Right. And Jake, I'm going to pull up your, uh, let me pull up your, your, your TikTok page while you explain your life a little bit to us. <laughs> yeah, man. Well, yeah, it's, it's good to be here, honestly, talking with both of you, you know, it really goes to show that just producing content, getting out there. All of us uh, will end up connecting eventually. I truly believe that. Like a lot of us have been creating content and you're somebody, Andreas, who I believe learns, you, you really walk the walk and talk the talk. You're one of those dudes who can really riff about anything because you've actually done a lot of things. Uh, in my own personal life, I'm a musician like you. I'm a fireman and a paramedic. I've been one for 15 years, but I've worked a lot of side jobs and I know certain things. It's like you with when you talk about physics or f the flat earth versus simulation theory or Tartaria and ancient technology, because you understand modern technology, you can talk about ancient technology from just an experiential standpoint. Very few people can do that. I think a lot of us musicians become conspiracy theorists because we recognize <laughs> patterns. We recognize when someone's talking jazz or when it's bullshit. Um, but yeah, so for me, I've been on YouTube and everything for a while doing podcasts, but TikTok, I kind of went viral at first talking about anti-masks and anti-pandemic, all of the stuff that gets us censored and banned. Um, I always call it now being talk blocked, but I still- compliance yeah. Regardless I like that. Of, you know. Talk blocks. Ah, yeah, I'm gonna bro, use that you know, from like, now on. Like you, blocks. I'm an idea man. I'd be rich if people invested in me. I have a you know a top list uh, Uber called Boober. I have a home <laughs> security called uh, Sherlock Holmes. I'm working on you know all of these things, but I'll never do them. So yeah, that's where I am. <laughs> Jake yeah, just called me out on my friend. mask. I've been wearing sunglasses on these streams, but you know yeah. for modesty's sake too. If someone comes I in to my yoga studio second, and they're wearing bro. a mask, I'm not gonna give them shit for it. But oh yeah, no. I mean, I just remember like uh, thinking, hey uh objectionally i'm only, i'm not gonna if i ever need i'm only you know don't you don't need this stuff and then all of a sudden i'm gonna need this stuff because as soon as i got to california where you know they were telling me it was gonna be like you're gonna have to wear a mask uh there was this major fire everywhere and all of a sudden i was super grateful because my dad had you know given me like a painter style N95 mask that he had, which mm -hmm. is just crazy because it looks like Star Wars. So walking around, you look like nuts. But that's also cool too because you're like so over the top that it's awesome. And then I'm literally driving, trying to get out of Santa Cruz before my tires melt, you know, going through the <laughs> Salinas Valley. I think I was, and there's just smoke everywhere. And I'm like, thank God I have this thing, you know, for the for the unique circumstance. Well, the first that I actually that needed. Andreas wore, and this is why he and you said something about coming from an agenda 2021. Yeah, the agenda 21 we'll pilot later. Santa Cruz is an agenda 21 pilot program. If you look up agenda 21 pilot programs, but it was the day the, that the, the pandemic Rio was really announced where you're in the airport with a plague mask on. Oh, yeah. Asking, yeah. is this an acceptable form of mask? Because they hadn't clarified anything at yeah, that point. Well, they just. 
It was even so, it was, so it people was even were wondering worse. if uh, you're part of the secret cabal. Uh, it was even worse or just than a that. Puppet. So worse than that. So basically, I had been Puritan. I had been in Connecticut. The I, uh, general. I had done a podcast with Philip Drujinin where I'd worn a plague mask from the the, the Palace Theater because we had like some masks. And then I'd gotten this really cool plague mask and this pilgrim hat because I was thinking, you know. Thanksgiving America, everything else, which comes out looking very holy mountain, eyes wide shut. No, but and you were yeah. on your way to Bermuda, right? I was, I, I just, I, I needed to keep. I, I, just I think I was on my Bermuda. way back from. I Bermuda just, I, I, since mask. then, I, I assumed that you and I were part of the same Cointel program. Right. We were just destined to meet. Cohen Brothers of content creation. But, Cohen uh, Brothers Tell program, I think it is. But we basically, I didn't want to break the fa- the Fabergé. I didn't want to destroy the uh, what's it called the you know paper mache. Paper mache, thank you. <laughs> Fabergé. Yeah, I know. You and I, we, we just sync up. Uh, Fabergé is a good metaphor. Or talk to him was. over the phone, other than text. So, yeah, yeah, it is what it is. You just have to try to know that I'm saying it's called something uh, chemistry. Else, right? yeah. But I didn't want to destroy the mask, so I'm wearing the mask. And by the time I land, and we heard that COVID was happening because in December it was already a thing. But this was by the point of January, I think, I think it was January by the time that they made March that, you know, I told my dad, you should really watch the president's address tonight. And he still thought right. I was crazy. Cause I'd been talking for two months about these videos that were coming through YouTube where all the letters right. were kind of dashed and dotted and yeah. showing people dropping. But I mean, like I flies, had been, but... I'd been sick in December cause there, and apparently the, there's a thing that happened called party zero, which was in Connecticut. It was about two blocks from the palace theater where I was at. And my boss had been, and I had been back and forth to this other place and we didn't know we were all getting sick, but it seemed like that's what it was, was we all had COVID. I'm telling you, the cigarettes are making everyone sick. And that's why people are having heart attacks is because they're have fire retardant in their blood. Interesting. Well, Jake, what do you think about fire retardant retardant in your blood? There was some political figure who recently came back from a trip abroad and they claimed there was a leak in his uh, gas tank or something. No, but um, everyone has their own tolerance levels for what's in there. And uh, like I said, public service announcement, re-roll your own tobacco in cotton mallow. Right. You know, in the 1600s or maybe 17, it was Cotton Mather in Boston who was informed by one of the people that was unfortunately purchased um and was assigned to him uh i think he was as part of the church he was kind of their mentor and guardian but it was um i mean maybe you'll you can find his name but he, he taught him that if you take a little pustule from the smallpox and then i take a cigarette and i burn you and then i put my smallpox pus in there and then you burn it again that's called a vaccine where he came from and so he had all these pock marks over him. And it wasn't because he ever had smallpox. It's because he had so many friends that he was able to convince, no, 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 we're blood brothers. And this is, again, where he came from, how they dealt with this spreading sense of unease and disease and cigarette burn bonding. <laughs> I've known some kids like that. But Cotton Mallow <laughs> and Cotton Mather, like a his- history, because the cure for the plague of the poison being back, not in the tobacco this time, they put it in the papers. But, um, it's cotton mallow, not cotton mather. Who knew? Well, man, I mean, so basically mask, I had it with me. Didn't want to destroy it. I put it on. I wear it through the airport. And I'm thinking, you know, they let Muslims wear hijabs. They, they, can't, I, they can't stop me. It was my first the time. Islands, they don't inspect Rasta's hair usually. You can and I felt like, I, yeah, and I felt like, you know, later on, like maybe I, I should have regretted the way I looked at that because I was like, you know, anybody can do anything. So I can do whatever I want. That's why I'm going to wear a mask in an airport. Duh. And then after right, yeah, that. You're right. Because you didn't get the news flash <laughs> until you were on the move. I, I, from what I recall. I was, the, seeing... I was the first person to wear a mask on a plane, basically. By the time I landed. Because you I... were going to kidnap David Bowie's body. You said you stayed <laughs> near his sister's house to give it to. Daughter. Who, who yeah. was it? So well, that was also all luck. Because who was I... the SpaceX engineer. Oh. I did I did a video um, just landing in Bermuda and then somebody who I hope you still are on, you know, the tour here and and watching the show just said, hey, I live in Bermuda and picked me up from the airport. And so all of a sudden I, you know, luckily through the fact that I do these shows, I was like, wait, my life is changing now because literally I can land anywhere, even get lost in Bermuda and meet somebody who can help me find in order to start a business in bermuda it either has to be owned by a bermudan citizen or at least 50 percent or 51 percent owned by them so you can't go there and set something up without also 
bringing because I want to start something called the Omni Yoga Data uh, Omni Yoga Institute to create the Omni Yoga Database, which is an empirical approach to seeing what words work best to teach newbies how to do yoga safely without getting injured. So that it's was all way about, too many it's words. It's monk, monkey, monkey airplane soldier. You got to just. I remember when I was in junior some, life. Someone's going to, you know, I don't want tax breaks. I just want them to welcome <laughs> it in. And it's kind of this lab where you can have people come and visit on yoga retreats and participate in our, our focus groups and studies and know that they're really contributing to, instead of some frou-frou, I like to say it this way because my yoga master told me this was the right way. And we have right. empirical evidence that if you skip this word and use this one, it um, tends to work better. Kent, Kent popping up with $5 in the great stream, y'all. Thank you very much, Kent. Well, That's what I okay. meant to do. Pull up the YouTube chat stream. So, do we go? Did we go deep enough into the crazy? Because we talked a bit about our past, but maybe we should mention more about what was it that made you? I mean, you said the way you can see things as a technologist, you know, and as a fireman or as a musician, you're seeing, you know, three levels of perspective of society. Uh, similarly, Mac, you're talking about uh, Mac. We're talking about yoga, right? So. Yoga is a, is a kind yeah. of a technology as well. Uh, how do I change it to eye drop bits? Whatever. I'll get my branding <laughs> straight eventually. I don't want, I'm not, I'm not trying to usurp you or, or hey, branch Mac. off and steal no, your, I like Mac. No, I'm, I'm just trying name. to join forces, but okay. What do you think? What do you think it is about? I mean, you see, well, like, I have questions for someone who uh, works in that, in that field. Um, not just about the vicarious trauma, which I'm not sure that's a term you've heard or familiar with, but kind of the trauma you bring home from you. If you, witness someone who's been injured or in distress and you're helping them. And even if you help them resolve the situation, um, there's a certain amount of self-care that's beneficial to engage in, to let go of those things. And so you're not bringing them home at the dinner. That's table, an interesting ideally. point. Jake, do you have PTSD from being a fire a fireman? Well, vicarious trauma and PTSD tech, I'm sure are defined differently, but and yeah, I don't want to make Jake, light of PTSD. But Jake, Jake what do you, what do you think you've got? Do you think you've got any stress from being a fireman? <laughs> Yeah, especially with no, he said in he a generation secrets. where um, everybody seems to say they have PTSD. I've been doing it for 15 years. I'm 35. I've seen the worst of the worst. Uh, it's a little bit different than PTSD from someone who is on patrol and then they get blown up by an, you know, a, a trap. Or made a decision you know to pull a trigger into, or lay a, you know, a, lay a mine like that a... hurt someone. Or wait, wait, wait sorry. Can, oh can... yeah, you're talking over on these podcasts. That's right. It's not a phone <laughs> yeah, conversation. It doesn't it work doesn't... that way. Yeah. I gotta remember that. Sorry, my Keep apologies. Going, Jake. Sorry. Um, with with the PTSD and all that. Anyways, when you're on shift and when you go into these situations, you know this. It's the same thing. If you're going into a yoga studio, there's certain apparel with certain rituals that put you in a certain state of being, a cer certain state of consciousness to do the job. So I would say that the PTSD is lessened when your competence level is increased. You know, with throughout experience, the more you see, unfortunately, the more you the better you handle it. So over the More years, numb. all of us have trash cans. The way I look at everything in life is we all have trash cans where we put all of this junk in our lives, all of these bad experiences. Because one thing that I've learned is every, obviously nobody's getting out alive, but trauma is coming for every single person. I, unfortunately, my job is everybody's trauma. It's the worst day of their lives. So I go into these situations and I've run on SIDS and now I'm running on SADS. I know the difference between a vaccinine and being all of sudden the other infant things. adult syndrome and, and sudden adult death syndrome. Is that just to clarify for the people yes, who don't know yeah. the angle? Absolutely. I'm interrupt and, it again. Well. Um, no, you know, I mean, you're good. And so I, over the past 15 years, I've probably worked codes, which is CPR, you know, you're innovating somebody, you're doing compressions on someone, uh, given an IO where you're putting basically a bone drill into their femur, breaking their ribs. I mean, and I mean, not their femur, their tibia. Um, yeah. but you're, you're doing all of is these that to things. hit a nerve giving them medications. I've done this a bone drill is to hit a nerve times. Or? What's that? What's the bone, thing drill a bone drill into the tibia? Is that to hit a nerve to try to reawaken? No, because of the bone marrow there sometimes in a cardiac arrest, uh, especially if the blood's not pumping, you won't 
be able to get an IV, a lot of times their veins are completely collapsed because there's no okay. pressure. So or you'll drill into or, you know. their tibia right here. But it seems no traumatic, but unfortunately, yeah, that's probably all you should say unless jobs. someone try it. Mm -hmm. um, and through doing these jobs, I've, I've worked over 100 codes. I've seen over 200 dead bodies. I've seen at least 50 people go from living to deceased in my presence. It is coming for everybody. I've been, I'm going to these people's houses and even in the, a lot of the calls are good. They're fine. They just need help. They don't know what to do in these situations. We live in a society where most people are unskilled and unprepared and want to be ignorant to the realities in harshness of life, death, disease, and the repercussions for their life choices. I know 70% of these people are on five or more medications. Antipsychotics are extremely ordinary kids. I ran on a six-year-old the other day who was on Adderall for ADHD. Wow. I, now I'm running on a lot of seizures. I see the effects of the experimental injections and yeah, man. I, you I've know, been seeing I've animals have seizures on YouTube lately. Time about Usually, everything. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yo, yeah, dude. And a lot of people watch for a lot more neurological disorders, whether it's John Titer saying that everybody's going to have mad cow disease in the future, or it's prions from these injections. <laughs> the glitching, they're, they're glitching they call it, a lot. They call it TikTok disorders yeah. and auto disorders out there. They call right. it TikTok because it actually not What's only up? is there the Tourette's thing where people may develop tics by watching, ticks. even even if it's just through social repetition or mimicry, um, especially the younger brain may be more imprintable that way. But um, yeah, I think I, I, I met someone who was bed bound, uh, morbidly obese and then some was receiving care, but spent all day with her phone right here. And when she mm -hmm. would talk to you, she would try not to make eye contact. But when she did, one eye would lock. And then she would talk about the TikToks she was trying to kind of reference as jokes and memes. And one of her eyes would glitch out as though it was her finger swiping on the... Oh, yeah. And so I think we underestimate the ability that we have to actually track multiple things, you know, playing sports you may develop that type of proprioception but even when it's on a screen right here um there's certain roger stone i notice sometimes is a little cross-eyed or but it's not cross-eyed it's that he's reading something and referencing his show notes while he's also kind of looking at the camera and so there are filters that are fixing these things and um well, if we get in trouble for anything it'll probably be this but bruce banner banner asks you know what proof is there that viruses exist or that bacteria affects uh health or i don't know if you said that or if it can hurt people i don't know how exact it so, was oh but i was going to say just really quickly uh bacteriophages are these little robots and you know so far i'm showing you only cgi pictures but here you go actually an electron microscope showing you some so there are examples of sems and uh, different kinds of scanning electron microscope mi microscopy pictures of these bacteriophages, which are they and look like robots. They are truly geometric formations of proteins that might have no conscious and they look like simply robots. wrap themselves together <laughs> yeah. in this formation over time and repetition, and then became self rep. When I was twelve, my uncle or my step uncle gave me, um, well, I guess step brother. Uh, 20 years older than me, a shirt with a bacteriophage on it. And he was at Ohio state doing research on that. So that form is familiar to me. And yeah, now it's definitely coming back. And the, uh, does the matrix, uh, what's what they call sentinel sentinel, right? Like the matrix, uh, sentinels the matrix are, sent, yeah. yeah, they're yeah, they they definitely based them. on bacteriophages to an extent well, you, for that comment, for that question, you know, that whether you want to believe in, terrain theory or germ theory and not believe viruses are real the reality is they might be naming it something different giving us the wrong language the wrong description for whatever they're working with secretly but they wouldn't spend millions and millions of dollars of our money in secret developing what they call viruses and right. vi and the cures there's a whole science developed for that now it's like space you know this like space is fake <laughs> it's a misnomer for what's really going on but exactly. they're doing some research and development absolutely they're doing some stuff 
that's huge. That's huge. Cause so many people want to say just because they're lying about everything that there's nothing that they're lying about, which would defeat the purpose of lying. You know, there's, Act, there's a, uh, yeah, exactly. there's a thing there. And so you look at proteins and you start to understand how proteins work. That's a big thing is a completely separate thing than bacteria though. So whoever, uh, Bruce, you're asking about bacteria and I'll, I'll get into this phage. Well, yeah. So bacteria phage has nothing to do with the bacteria though. Essentially okay. it's a robot that eat, can call right, right. You're right. It's a robot that can farm bacteria, but it has, it's really a separate uh, entity, but you, but there are some really fascinating studies in Chinese medicine about bacteria's effect on gut fauna leading to cancerous mutinies of the, of the, of the consciousness. That is what Chinese medicine preaches is that and i'm part chinese so we could talk about this oh go yeah ahead. yeah well no go ahead and elaborate because like i only know that it's that's i met no, a chinese you. guy once who told me this basically one time i was at esalen and this chinese guy said yeah when the when there's a a, a, a post-traumatic stress or a some sort of a trauma that usually three to seven years after that uh if you haven't figured out how to reconcile your your uniformity or harmonize your consciousness that a part of your body might mutiny and that mutinize mutinies can lead to uh benign or worse malignant turmeric growth which can become cancerous that was the way i've been taught it. ease disease all right yes disease and that's you know all of these it's the terrain theory versus the germ theory yes there the terrain theory would be a hundred percent real and accurate if there weren't other beings and entities dumping toxic waste into our terrarium that we're growing in and, and these, eating and this swimming toxic and drinking waste and, yeah. are the chemtrails everything in our water everything in the medications and the food and that's food that and the plastics we, yeah yeah we live in the upside down they give us water and plastic bottles <laughs> <laughs> And when yeah. I opened my yoga studio, maybe seven or eight years ago, very quickly, someone walked in with a laminated resume and presented himself as a healer, which I thought was something that was a term from ancient times that people used to. And it turns out, no, he actually has a master's degree in the healing arts and MH. It's not a master's in health education or administration. Um, wow, weird. But, you know, it's like having a brown belt in five different types of karate, but not a black, a black belt, because then you're actually technically a lethal weapon. So the scariest uh. thing you can ever hear. But when it comes to that, he went that way with the healing arts and um, specifically talking about right, historically opportunities to exploit or um, you know, he was big on Dr. Sebi. I don't know if that's Who's Dr. someone Sebi? either of you, someone who was curing AIDS patients. I think um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Charlie Did Sheen might have gone to Dr. Sebi. <laughs> What's it's one name? of those things that if you if you walk up to um, a certain person Wall and Street. you bring up Dr. Sebi, they're like, wait a minute. Whitey's not supposed Matthew to Matthew McConaughey. Him. He played Dr. Sebi. That's what we're going after, right? In, in, uh, is that wrong or no? You no, Dr. Sebi's this. Uh, he, he's probably, I don't know, but he's African-American. Oh, and he was all about so not inflammation being the root cause. Inflammation, he felt in as, and um, po not uh, polarity, pH, um, yeah. acidity. Through level. diet. Uh, it would have it was the primary cause of dysfunction in the body and could be you could address a lot of the dysfunctions that way. I mean, I'm wondering if you guys agree that a lot of ancient traditions that seem to kind of have become detached from their original source and meaning end up coming back around. Uh, it's like uh, eating kosher meant that you weren't you they had uh, unglazed pottery that they were eating on. So there were certain types of bacteria that would mix well if and you couldn't wash it off and so when it comes to smoking a peace pipe it may just be a stereotypical image i'm not i don't really have any major cultural landmarks or reference points for that but the idea the, that when you meet strangers and you're breathing the same air it wouldn't hurt you know i hear that heat kills viruses it denatures proteins and so if you inhale 300 degree air for a quick second a few times and exchange that it doesn't matter that your spit is getting on the pipe and exchanging it. You've, you've addressed the situation of whatever seed was going to be planted. You've, you've there's kind a, of there's evidence it. that, uh, you know, they were saying uh, in December of 2019 and into the beginning of 2020 that, and you know, not recommending this. I'm just saying that this was something that was being said by random people on the internet, not doctors that smoking cigarettes uh, or smoking marijuana or anything smoking, 
was helping release phlegm in the lungs and was helping people that were getting sick. I mean, I don't know if it's true. Probably isn't. Don't don't get me in trouble. Well, ancient doctors would prescribe sulfur, which would make you hack up a lung for an hour. Yeah. Or a hack up a lung to get something out if it was stuck in there. Um, Yeah. It's the nicotine. They say the nicotine in tobacco, it would bond. Well, the nicotine, it binds to the same receptor that covid supposedly would bind to in the lungs it's the same receptor the nicotinic receptors are the same receptors that are to blame for parkinson's disease hmm. well nicotine is metabolized by the body into codeine, which is kind of two separate molecules it kind of breaks nicotine and, and again this is based on a scientific american article i read in 2006 so i may not be right but focus factor which was an over-the-counter memory cognitive supplement before uh, Joe Rogan got into a uh, alpha brain or, or, or whatever it was. Um, it, it, there are cognitive benefits potentially to not only consuming creatine, if you don't, if it's been absent in your diet for some time, eating skeletal muscle that has creatine in it or supplementing with a powdered form and also um, certain neuro, you know, the, they're plants that have gotten classified as drugs and regulated and taxed and commodified and cat, you know, what's an addiction. I mean, I don't know. Am I addicted to air and water? Am I addicted Probably. to sugar? Maybe, but wait, there was a, th- a thought, hold on. I just lost it, but I was going to follow it. Oh, mononicotinamide. Because when I had uh, gotten sick and we got some, you know, I don't know how I'm supposed to even go about telling that story. Basically, Vitamin B, uh, there's a kind of vitamin B mononicotinamide, and that works really well. So a lot of people take that just for health. They get like a an IV of mononicotinamide, and it will flush their system, and it helps them uh, with antibodies and apoptosis, and it gives you this weird kind of strength because it's a vitamin B supplement, but it is a mononicotinamide. It also apparently is like a very successful. I guess that that's the point. I should stop. <laughs> I'm always so scared. It's like yeah, it's like I read it was good for this, and then right. Um, no, I experienced it. It's like telling someone it, to take but... silver for it, and then there's always yeah. going to be a certain percentage. That blue guy. I was trying to explain this to one of my team. <laughs> there's certain some people have OCD, and you're yeah. going to say only take the silver solution once a month, and they're going to take it three times a day, and then they're going to end up with blue skin. Dude, but Smurf people are, I'm not recommending people become Smurf people. I'm just saying people that are prejudiced against Smurf people are the problem. That's not the Smurf people themselves. So, speaking of, Blue of lives lovely matter, tattoos. Bro. Yeah, Blue Lives Matter. Jake's well, right. here in Massachusetts, <laughs> tattoos were illegal for decades. Only within the last couple of years has, have they unregulated. And it was because specifically there was no such thing as an ink that had been properly long-term focus grouped and tested to see if it was Safe I think it's just race, racism against Irish people. They were sick of I all these blue Irish. I thought it was about Irish, that you know? one tattoo guy like, see playing, see playing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, that also it was be. a way to identify criminals. And if you had good tattoos, that means you knew connections on the underground to get them. Or, but, but outside Leviticus of that, I, when and they the found, it was it the, the Iceman, Yetzli, or it was the guy who was frozen 5,000 years old. And he had right, a bunch with of the tattoos. Adidas. And they said yeah. that was a way to get vitamins. So if you were anemic, they'd go over one of your arteries and freaking tap in some interesting some uh. dust of iron. <laughs> I remember, instance. I remember that doc and they were showing that it was a health thing. Maybe he had hurt his bones and they were doing some sort of a medicine, but vitamins makes the most sense actually, because br- blood brain barrier. That's interesting. There's certain so documents we- that came out of um, Africa, maybe around the year 1500 where they would show the faces of the different people. And when they showed a white person, the word was like sick, like liver ill. And they mm. assumed that the only reason this pale complexion, we must have been lacking some nutrients. And so they, some people would eat the clay pot after they eat their soup. I mean, there's just different types of diets out there. And um, for all we know, this idea that fluorine and lead, yeah, it's up uh, in gold and silver. And yeah, it's all poison. You definitely don't want to wear a necklace, for instance, of gold or silver and have it constantly rubbing. And, or again, yeah, it's like maybe the reason we all, a lot of people in today's day and age end up at this, uh, extra low frequency energy which we brought up in our, in the last podcast but uh, oh my god i just remembered the name i was thinking of earlier i'm sorry this is a this is a hard uh, hard fork hard shift right here but we were talking fork, about, well, well put, we were thought. we had been talking a bit about um you know banking and problems in you know banking around the world and trying to help people you know get these bank accounts i think i've told this story before to some extent but i kind of think it's important to reiterate because it's become more prevalent uh vitalik 
stands for Ethereum Dev arrested for advising North Korea, Virgil Griffith. So if I go Virgil Griffith, that was what I was looking for. Um, Virgil Griffith is a hacker who went and spoke, like long story short, at, in North Korea, told them how they could avoid these sanctions by using cryptocurrency and was arrested in the United States and is going to be serving five to 10 years for showing them how they can you know, live their lives. Well, and it's around. called money laundering. It's like hiding it from who? The government? God forbid. You know. Well, I mean, it's, it's Korea. It's not just that. It's Korea. Is, North Korea is not supposed to be allowed to buy certain things, get certain loans, uh, cooperate with other economies. There are states that would be happy to work with North Korea, but they're not allowed to because the United States has said, we're not going to interact with other countries that interact with North Korea. So it's kind of a situation where they might be like, hey, sorry, you know, Pakistan might say, hey, we're sorry, we'd love to work with you, but we can't, you know, but any country. It's a great France, way to keep me from jumping in as you talk about North Korea and Pakistan, and I'm going to go ahead and defer to you on that. But well, I mean, you what know, I it's, see, what I, it's a bigger thing. Equation is Kim, the leader of North Korea, is portrayed as some evil person or maniacal or power hungry. Or in reality, he has a certain number of millions of people living underneath his care, and he could unplug them and cut off their food supply real quick if he wanted to. He has no desire to do so. But when he goes to the international community and says he needs help or he wants his navy to be able to move here in the North Korea, apparently is a quite a large navy. Um, right. Whether they know how to degauss it or not is a separate issue. Um, <laughs> but but this idea, though, that he's he's not holding these people hostage. At this point, the international community is only placing a value of $400 on every one of his citizens' heads for their entire life. And in right. reality, we should be able to, willing and desire to commit resources. Obviously, throwing money into the country is not no, the way that... it's got to go to Ukraine. First. Yeah. Laundering, yeah. Yeah, it's got to go to Ukraine. They need it. I grew up my whole life. My parents, <laughs> grandparents, psyched. no, 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 no family psyched, history. No, all of a sudden no, right. recently, yeah, oh, exactly. both sides of my family, Ukraine. Oh, is that where you guys are from and why you never talked about it? Hmm. Well, I mean, Ukraine's it's funny. Like if you think about it, I was watching Servant of the People and everybody Ugh. looks, they look like a normal Hollywood person from the East Coast. And you're like, oh, OK, yeah, because literally that's that's they all there was a mass exodus of Ukrainians already. And they're the ones who are trying to take over America. Like, I mean, it, you know, there's because a lot of people that are, but well, I mean, it's in general. See, the thing is, there's like six or seven different groups of people from Ukraine yeah. that are all uh, they're all from cities that are in different countries now. I mean, and this the same thing with Russians. There are Russians in Ukraine that don't like uh, Putin that just want to that want to exist in their own Canadian equivalent to Russia. So. Ukraine's a very complicated place. Well, There's also the Tartar nationalists. Basically, the, the irony, the Tartarian nationalists being th like the biggest strength besides Tartar stand in the Ukraine shows you what a weird confluence the Ukraine really is. But Kazarians and, and get, maybe always Kazarians are not just that Ukrainian. That's the other thing. There's Kazarians that took over the Cordoba Caliphate into Spain and into parts of France and everything else. So well, it's you like, know, look, we've got to make these general. fifty thousand people disappear real quick, and it's either the SS that's going to come in and put them in a pit, and they'll make them disappear that way, or we can change their identity, right, Soviet style, and, put Soviet and style them. There seems else. to be someone trying to stamp out this family lineage, so we'll send half of them to America. And you know what I was yeah. told about the African American slaves that were brought over to work on plantations—that kind of part of the evil of the system was that they were purposefully split up so that people from the same area and region weren't uh co-located so they had to adopt the local language and they weren't able to kind of scheme or, or talk secretly or um even just preserve their culture um and then i realized when i was i'm going yep yeah, wait a minute me and like i grew up in a town where it's 50 percent jewish which is very rare it's mainly very reformed judaism a city of a hundred thousand people and none of us had a lick of a sense of where Maybe our grandparents spoke a little bit of Yiddish, but um, well, yeah, which is a more German Hebrew. Yeah, we're all we all fled the old world as as medieval people, and we brought our traditions with us. I think when it comes to these medieval traditions and how it intersects with the uh, the idea of being a fireman or a first responder, um, paramedic. In the old days, it was the butcher, or your dent, or the um, the barbers, and they had the sharpest blades, and the the spinning. Um, sign that you see outside of a, a place that cuts hair now is actually a symbol
symbolizing bloody rags blowing in the wind because they used to pull teeth. Yeah, it was a bloodletting. The symbol, the barber spiral, the re- the candy cane represents bloodletting, which is and the which idea is fun. that the the coroner was often the one cutting babies out of dead women three days later and then reviving them. So when he said he had lots of secrets, on one hand, I know that being there, you end up kind of you said tricks of the trade and you develop experience and you learn how to process what you're seeing in a way that you can react to it and then let go of it. Um, but when it comes to the weird tricks of the trade and secrets, um, there's something called the triad of death. And I don't think it's a bunch of gangs from the Middle East or Asia. It's, it's actually the triad of death is a balance of hormones and chemicals in your blood. So you can't just take a bag of blood. And if you bleed out, you just pump the new blood into you. That's not really what keeps the balance. And whoever's job it is to figure that out at the hospitals, especially when women are giving birth and letting go of like three humans worth of blood for some reason. Um, I was going to ask my, you specifically, my buddy, have you ever say, reacted to people giving birth? Um, oh, I just really quickly want to say, though, my friend Kurt, who's been on this show, he's been doing bloodletting. Uh, you know, he's doing, we, we donate blood, plasma selling or whatever. It's a little he different. Sell, he sells plasma, <laughs> but he's feeling like better, you know, somehow. And so he's been thinking, like, what if there is something to the barber well, medicines? He needs to probably go get his blood, his blood tested and go get his blood levels tested. Right. Um, I have a condition where I actually uh, produce too many platelets and hmm. people with that condition, uh, if they bloodletting used to be the because our blood gets too thick. So they a lot of people still today donate blood instead of taking medication as treatment wow. for that. So hmm. that dude, I would tell him, go make sure your platelet levels are, are good. Um, as far as births go dude like I've, I've delivered a baby i've assisted in a couple i've seen a few um i've seen it's called a c-section and i think it's part of our old world mentality and medieval history we we fled that world we didn't bring the best knowledge and secrets with us and we went backwards about five thousand the maybe, C-se- maybe 50, the cesarean years, section is not as bad as the taint cut right i forget what that's called but that's the one where they lose all the feelings it can, yeah, it can sever yeah. nerves as well. Yeah, yeah. The, per- the perineum, they cut Which, that. Perineum. But there are people who think, no, you need to neuter the woman's sexual desire and then she'll be a good mother. And again, to me, that's it, barbaric. It is interesting that we have, thing to say. We, we, and, we, um, we will say like you know, female clitoral uh, circumcision, you know, we obviously agree is barbaric. But, but you, trust me, you can get 10 women who are going to defend to the death their right to help people die through giving birth which is a term we've created to justify this whole confusing mess that we've created when um but is like, it that there, is it that complicated i mean it seems where like they're, it they're is. testing oh sorry oh. i was gonna say birthing is really for whatever reason for humans more complicated no is it not more complicated for humans? it seems like there's a, pangolin, like a, biblical which is a two-legged antiquated. creature which also needs c-sections all other creatures that we observe that give birth like on a farm they have four legs and so there's not mm-hmm. as much connective strength and tissue required or needed and they're able to, to allow these things to pass. Whereas we've not only made it upright and go find me another example other than a pangolin <laughs> um, <laughs> of something that has an equivalent set of circumstances. And then from an aesthetic standpoint, we've been breeding in certain cultures, especially there's a, a premium for narrow hips and other cultures, it's wide hips, but there, there are a proportion of the population. We're making it where, harder, to, harder to birth, right? For humans. Yeah. And, and it's an that, interesting predicament um, we find ourselves in when it comes to that um, as a society, I think, and how to address it. Er- Erdogan and Turkey, I think, outlawed the C-section, basically, whereas in Brazil, wow. where they perform lots of cosmetic procedures, and my mother's opinion was because they were superficial. That's why in private care there, when you pay to instead of just showing up at the hospital, 82, maybe 87 um, percent C-sections. Wow. pre-planned see when in america a c-section happens after you fail bleeding out through through parturition which is the proper term for birth part parturition i think is and that, that that's what you're doing you're you're parting the red seas essentially and um i don't know how they choose whether to give blood to people who are hurt in an accident or a gunshot wound versus or how they even keep the right kind of blood on on hand for the types of situations that are, you have these very strong minded, educated American women who are not going, they've never, they didn't have that uh, bottom of the ninth inning, two outs and they're up at the plate. They didn't have the 
fourth quarter, they're the one taking the shot. And so their moment to say, I, I did it. I don't know if you saw Caitlin Bennett from Liberty Hangout. If you watch through to the end of her birth video that she just put out a few months ago, she's <laughs> wide-eyed. People, I don't watch she's a lot of she's going, videos. am I going to be okay? And it's like, no, we haven't seen another video from her yet. Right. My sister, These are why and Scientologists, my both Scientologists are constantly... Experiences. Well, well. Scientologists are constantly under the gun for saying that they're going to, you know, encourage people to have natural births without, you know, so much, uh, you know, opiates. And natural birth meant issues. either the baby died or the mom died. That's what natural was back in the day. Yeah, it's weird. People are very resilient. That's this is what I'm going to say. As somebody who's delivered babies, been around them, I have two boys. I've I've been in the room for both of their births, which were C-sections, but we're, which were due to complications. We're forced to uh, be born and to die in hospitals. They've made a business out of every fucking thing on this planet, and that includes birth and death. Those are the biggest biggest businesses and that's how they register you tag you inject you with all the things that you don't need and uh give you your birth certificate and like the jordan maxwell type stuff where they just right. you know load you in all this but people are very resilient the problem with all of these natural births and people thinking things are really complicated and it's dangerous and all that is because it, education re, education doesn't equal experience. Reading something on the internet, it might tell you how to fix a car, but you, at some point you kind of got to go fix a like car. Right in Brazil, and that's most all the high priced surgeons are there, and so they're available and they're comfortable because it's actually a process of cosmetic surgery where you have to separate the fascia and the connective tissue from the abdominal cavity, which someone who's used to doing intrusive surgery or even focusing on removing the uterus from the womb and making sure that all the blood vessels are cauterized and might have no experience. He, what, the day's done, he's just going to sew up that wound. Whereas if you have right. a plastic surgeon on hand, again, it sounds like a superficial thing. How is it? No, they're going to be there to first connect a couple layers of connective tissue and then the skin so that you can continue to perform C-section births without building up a huge amount of scar tissue. And major leagues, there was a Jerry Remy who was the announcer for the Red Sox and he had a real short career at second base because he had three knee surgeries. And by the third one, it's just all scar tissue. You open it up like a big X and now they've got orthoscopic ways where you can get 10 knee surgeries and scopes and um, continue, continue playing. Um, I don't uh, know. It's a, to me, it feels like part of my, my uh, mission somehow that I've adopted is, is trying to raise awareness about the violence that's committed on women by medical professionals and it's perpetuated by i think what you were saying a lack of education about people are very squeamish in in boston they in other it's places they used women, to pay though. to import dead bodies women. and the it's... only time you cut it open Go ahead, Jake. Wait, was, what you when, when you... it was a cadaver yeah, when please, you think it's not just women what do you mean it's not it's called practicing medicine for a reason that was the third leading cause of death in america and after what right. we've seen with covid I would guarantee you it's the first leading cause of death is doctors. They are the most indoctrinated. Every single fireman, every paramedic and fireman that I know, we go to on scene and somebody says, hey, I'm a doctor. We're like, cool, step back, please. Because <laughs> without all of their tools in the hospital, they're useless. They don't go to people's houses and do CPR and all that. They have a whole staff, a lot of machinery, a lot of diagnosis which diagnosis is a different word than prognosis and mm. you know in this upside down reality everything words matter but they also are always reversed like healthcare sick care that they made yep. a business out of all this shit so yep. um but you know with all of these people you got a lot of people on the internet that want to naturally birth their children and they've done zero research and zero <laughs> real world experience you gotta be prepared to encounter well, the, 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 the worst joke of the that worst Caesar... in like the worst case scenario in life and in my job what i see when when people call us it's because they went hiking and wanted to be an outdoorsman without ever being outdoors before or they wanted to go do some Learning extreme care. crap without ever doing the work required to get there because we live in like a really fast internet society yeah I mean, it's funny. I was a I was a cesarean uh, C-section because it's it's a common thing with people. My mom was like forty. Uh, you know, it's not something that everyone chooses to do. However, it's called it's, traumatic encephalopathy, and it's evil to do to a baby because you well, want to push it out. If from your you if, 
And if you if you need to if you need to do it, you need to do it. But the problem is, I think there, now there's, there's so many doctors that, that are just forward. body plumbers, and they're like, "Hey, this is the quickest, fastest way. I don't have to do that. I don't have to worry yeah, about but from resources you know. again. If from a simple a blood loss standpoint, I would think that they could do some sort of calculation and, and almost insist. And in certain right. contexts, interesting. It is done that way. Um, yeah, I mean, there is a lot. The historical joke. I, I was going to say. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say also the 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 uh, healing line. It's more likely to rip open again. It's more likely to have tears later on. There, there can and be. If you more... make the cut, you know where the cut is. And if yeah. something tears inside, right, you don't know where the internal bleeding coming. Uh, there, there was something about these little metal screws that got shot into. We've got comments. Our, three, you know. Very interesting. Three men talking about birthing. We should definitely do three men and a baby, but it'd be three podcasts yeah, just... and a baby. I think it's not a bad. Thing. Yeah. Hey, what do you think, Andreas? Is is you know you're some guy. Like I said before, bro, really, truly, you're ahead of the curve in a lot of ways. Um, have you ever read this Jack Parsons short story called, uh, I, I want to say it's called Tannis or Where is Tannis? And it's about seekers versus runners. And people like Jack Parsons were runners. And they just, they run to the outer edges of culture, of possibility, of what m- most people see. As You know, Alex Jones is kind of a runner with certain things, even if he's the martyr that's running into fucking uh, traps. <laughs> to be, well, does the concept uh, of edge lording, edge lordy, kind of fit into that? Because that Joe Rogan seems to appreciate most the comp. I think there's that a difference to be edge lords. I think I mean, that's okay. I was going to. say, I have to already comment. I'm sorry. I was waiting for you to get through it, but I wanted to say this about the difference between running and being an edge lord already, because running you can get. You know, if, have you seen um, Logan's Run or have you seen THX one one three eight? They have to escape. They're running, right? They can't, if yeah. you stay, you're stuck. But if you get too far At out, they die. Yeah, but if you get too far out, then uh, then you can't contact the the followers. You can't help them anymore. So there's a huge part of the movie which is them while well, they're edge lords, and the edge lord lifestyle is very different than the runner lifestyle. You know, I, I think that's a the edge lords are more successful. So uh, what do you think more is the as as a runner? It, yeah. You know, or you, you're not an edge lord, my bro. You're a runner. As a runner, <laughs> what do you think are the main things on the horizon? The main, what do you see in the next year? What do you see the best things and the worst things? Uh, well, I think, I think technologically, we're going to start seeing the the fulfillment of promises from ideological abstracts that didn't seem possible. For instance, antinatalism, it'll be way easier within a year for people to have babies without them being gestated in a human body. I think that's the first. If you're major... giving birth in space, no one is going to be. No one's going to scream. Par- par- Parturated. <laughs> that will not be tolerated. It will not be safe. It will not be a good use of resources. And all births will be performed likely in call, E-N-C-A-U-L, which is not O-N-C-A-L-L, but um, which Apparently, there's some bleed over into the old Roe v. Wade thing with the right. proliferation well, also... of knowledge of these type of procedures. But when I, why when third grade was a television wheeled in, as Owen Benjamin said about the Challenger? It's like we never saw that TV. They wheeled it in, the Challenger went up, it blew up, and they wheeled out the TV. It's like MK Ultra. But well, why, I, I why think... did I see a woman giving birth one way? And I, until I was 38 years old and researching it for months, going, oh, there's something called on call. And when you look back at all the paintings of the past masters like Hieronymus Bosch there's people in these bubbles and it, it's something that would drive someone mad if you saw all the women you love suffer and die um births used to be synchronized and so there wouldn't you know it was um yeah but when I, you see I, somebody I, I, give birth when you see your wife give birth to your son it's also the most beautiful thing yeah, you've ever seen. right I've never I've not experienced that uh, partnership with it. There's with no fear in bringing it. I a mean, life into like the world. Like anything good in life, you fear it. But that's what it would be a Shonda to talk memorable. about any negative way about that. I, I, I think don't mean that any personal. If the, um, if the state flexed its mu- muscles, but more like a Kegel exercise, it would be a bigger deal for the world. So that's that is a big thing. But I think antinatalism will lead to more babies being born. Uh, just through the machine. And what that will also mean about Roe versus, versus Wade is that a lot of the time they'll say, hey, if you want to get rid of the baby, you're not going to be allowed to kill it in this state or in another state. You're going to have to donate it to this corporation or to- Well, they convince you know, people they're freezing it and they only bring it down to a certain temperature and then they bring it back as for, from what I've that's, read. Of the, that's, that's another, but that's it, another historical thing that's context. What you're saying is, is correct. Is people originally, when Caesar said you must- 
perform a cesarean section on a woman that is near death or dead, you can't bury the child inside them. The thought was, well, this is just going to give more soldiers to the evil overlords of Rome. And the more babies that we have, we're feeding that system. And my parents themselves didn't have kids until their 30s with this idea of having, you know, seen the ravages of World War II in the community and then up through all the conflicts in the 70s, just saying, why would we have kids? They're just going to turn them into soldiers and send them to war. But I think it's easier to remove when you're really trying to deal with something from a statistical and new, you know, objective standpoint. I try to take it to the point of, you know, there's a YouTube video where someone has a hundred snake eggs and some of them push their way out and they hatch themselves and you can, and then, you know, 15% of the eggs, they, they just sit there and squirm and they don't come out. And if you leave them there, they just rot. But if you go by and you slit the eggs and help them out. And so if you had a hundred chihuahuas and they were all pregnant and you only had two surgeons, and the chihuahuas were picking whether or not when the doctor showed up and said, okay, it's your turn. They're like, no, 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 I'm pushing. You're doing what? You're Those doing poor what? poor chihuahuas. And so okay. it, it, you hear reports of, right, it's at the end of the day, there's still three women that are there and the doctors go home. They have lives and they deserve to have lives. Um, but I was going to say, I think, I think we're going to hit a point where there's going to be more uh, babies born in synthetic gestation in the next year. You're also going to see more, uh, you know, because of that, abortion is going to be, a more confusing issue because for the first time ever pro-choice will literally mean a choice. There's going to be a choice there where the baby can be raised in a machine, but we're also going to see a major resurgence. unacknowledged subtext here is right. This isn't right. just Roe v. Wade in the old, no, no, now, this is the baby will now belong to the state, but it's also that, not alive. So the other thing is that the, the baby could be used the same way. As long as legislation is stays the way it does, then a preborn could be used the same way once it's been aborted or it's been, once you are no longer in charge of your pregnancy, then the baby could be grown, harvested, cultivated for all sorts of things until legislation exists to stop that. And like you said, it doesn't have to be just that they're getting organs out of this or stem cells. They could be raising these for soldiers or for a uh, state owned citizen and state owned citizens. I mean, we know this exists because or to torture seen... them. You have an enemy and you they're a sperm donor. You just breed their kids. And it's like you have built a tower of Morty's over the Rick. To hi- or, you yeah. Know, or you, you can scan, you cast, you can scan their DNA as, as Morty in the real life. Rick and Morty. <laughs> there, there's, there's, could, uh... They would scan, they would scan your DNA though. And so they would have all the data. So there are some benefits here. This is something else that's kind of interesting. All of the eugenics nightmares that existed in the thirties and forties don't need to happen because of this. I mean, we can take the DNA data and instead of killing somebody who has muscular dy- dystrophy, they can save their life and they can remove a, a, a gene sequence. So there is also a whole new line of a resurgence of what was going on in the 30s ideology of perfecting the human, which will become somehow socially more acceptable because of this. And in the 1890s into the 1920s, the Leninists were trying very hard, the Marxists into the Leninists were trying very hard to ban marriage. Uh, The Groikov uh, Goldbarg laws in 1918 tried to illegal make marriage illegal because they saw it as ableist. You know, there's all these, they saw the family as ableist. The idea that children had sometimes families, some of these families better than other families. This was a there very was so much shame brutal. for infidelity. Yeah, so, and you've got ending the Russian... marriage. They would often be be uh, honor killings or yeah. And well, you've got the Cossack kidnapping wives uh, tradition. Letter, but you cast her to the edges of town in the winter. And but you also had uh, you know at this time uh, the Russian civil war, and you had millions of Russian orphans. It, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of Russian living orphans. in camps often. And just so as a logical, historical to build context, I'm no, by no means a denier of uh, historical events. I always think it's in, interesting am. to have a different lens. And coming from a Jewish family, perhaps I feel more comfortable playing into this space. But if you have a camp of 100,000 people, there's going to be a certain number of people that are proportional dwarfs, and very small people. <laughs> and also, as you, you said, muscular, dis- well, hold on, hold on. muscular right. dystrophy, though. So what would it look like if you went to the medical ward where the hundred people from that camp all had muscular dystrophy and you took a picture? Because when did they die? Those prisoners died once they were no longer under the care in the camps and the Americans fed them candy bars and they, it rotted their systems. And they, and it's like the small people lived until age 80 or 90. And we were told that they were hated and rooted out to be exterminated. But when you actually look at some of the evidence, again, maybe 
I have a blind eye to a lot of it. I'm, I don't have access to it, but um, it seems as though there's a little bit of a cognitive dissonance happening there. Um, we do like to act like everything was done intentionally when a lot of the time it's out of good intention that horrible things happen. I don't know how much more well, we should comment on that line. Bob, I think it's good intentions that create and it's the bad intentions that twist. It's mm -hmm. like what you're talking about, where at in the 30s and the 40s, the eugenicists always take a good idea. It, in the theory of adaptation, they change it to evolution and they take perfecting building a human. That was building a ruler. They were trying to build a master race. And now mm -hmm. they're trying to build a master slave race, I mm. think, because we will say, yeah, well, we're going to use it. It's just like abortions. It's for rape victims and incest and all of these rare things. We always want to make the rule for specific statistics that we want to look for and measure to confirm our biases, which is not ours. It's the rulers. But like that, it's I like bringing up you. the term assault Everything weapons. Everything that it we muddies see the water. that is meant to help people, it's really going to be weaponized against us. What we talked about earlier with YouTube. Back in mm. the day, dude, we could get on here and look up anything for free. I'm, you know, we're the, all like around the same age. We're in the heydays of the right. internet and now it's going to be locked down eventually. Um, yeah, and it used to be your library card. The government didn't have access to know what books you took out of the library. Really? And that does not apply to the search. History. I never would have imagined sure. the government didn't know exactly what books I had. I always kind of imagined that's the thing about the government. To me, it's a Soviet God that's always watching. And yeah, they yeah. own the libraries. They know what books are in there. It doesn't matter who checks them out. Yeah. And there's a system with a card. So it'd be really easy. I would think Bruce Banner, who spent, I think he said his lunch money on this question. So I want to make sure we answer it. For yeah. him. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, I, you want me to read the super chats or you got it? You got no, it. I'm good. I'm just trying to make sure I do it. He says you have 30 trillion forms of bacteria in your body. So is mathematically impossible for bacteria to be harmful? Really? I don't know if that, I agree well, with the first part. There's billions of people Imbalance. on earth and there's harmful ones. What does the electromagnetic image show you, uh, show you, tell you, what does the EM image you show tell you about disease? Study German new medicine. Well, you know what? Tomorrow, just on that, we will have a, a guest who's just, you know, Raphael's getting back from Davos. So yes, we will be talking about, for whatever reason, German new medicine tomorrow. But I would say uh, my, my- Just a name drop. My brother spoke at Davos, but yeah, anyways. Oh, sweet. And hey, you know what? Very soon, by the way, Stefan, we should do something- Not that that's your... something to brag about. We No, but we should get your brother- Yeah, right. But we should get your brother to talk about some stuff at some point, And if too. not, we'll, uh, we'll just have you mock up a version of him and I'll, I see, I'll, I see I'll him do his doing, voice, too. I see, I see his Etsy commercials on TV, so that's not bad, but he's doing, he's doing something. But, uh, okay, wait. I was going to say that the disease idea that bacteriophages- can be one could be bad no i think it's more you are a bus you have a massive population uh parts of your body uh have more in uh less borders you know whatever and it can become overwhelming and i think you've seen people that are they're they're driven by their second brain i think is what katie perry called her stomach right so i mean yeah. it, it can be a serious least it can affect math you related to it's science. the same it's it the same as the environment. Tyson, that, yeah. Right. Wait, in the environment. Go ahead. Say sorry. It's the same as the earth or the environment or any ecosystem. We are in an enclosed system and it doesn't matter how many viruses or bacteria or however we label or identify these things or quantify them. Every medicine actuates. It either agonizes or antagonizes a certain chemical or receptor in your body. It's like we all have DNT. When you smoke DNT, it helps put uh, certain pathways that, you know, uptake this DMT. Um, epinephrine, we always have it in us, but we can't, no medication Epipen. really poisons you. It just makes your body poison itself. So I think like, it doesn't matter if we say there's all these billions of bacteria, how can some be harmful? It's the same way that food can be harmful, that what we drink can be harmful. It all matters how we affect those levels of what's in us, like as, as acidity versus being more base. Base is a good thing. <laughs> Cancer only I, grows in acidic environments, bro. That's why when they're like, that's base. Hell yeah, it is, dude. Yeah. When I grew up, the used based as a different way, a different type of slang word. You would say it's like um, something is 
blank based. And so you, you know, we're going to keep it smoking based tonight. We're going to, we're going to. Oh, limited. Oh, that's so-and-so good too, though. So-and-so keeps it pretty Nietzsche based or so-and-so keeps it pretty uh, Jordan yeah. Peterson based with his philosophy or. But, but it's so, true. It's true. The oh, fundamentality of having a, you know, a, a, a foundation, <laughs> a foundation for your, this tonight's going to be based on these, things we're going to focus on these things other things can happen to an extent but we're focusing that's good the other beautiful thing about base mean alkalinic is you know alkal alkalid alkalitics can can really the energy there's an energy flow there which Mm -hmm. you know acid i heard you say haiti as haiti because otherwise it is hades just right in the, sorry that's my linguistic program yeah i, I forget if i said it because i was talking to someone from haiti that well, maybe day, they choose I to think, say it that way because they're sick of people referring to their country as hades or you know <laughs> yeah that's that's um, that's funny like the land of the dead right and tartarus is similarly considered the land of the dead but but so know, jake I, as far as just touching on this idea that there are dysfunctions or even injuries when you say you come upon um or when you're called into action so to speak there are types of medicine that can be conveyed through kind of energetic means. And again, I come from such a scientific anti-woo-woo background, but having, you know, I think even Andreas admitted to having a crystal or two, and I see it as a useful artifice. It's like, um, we'll get into the crystals thing later, but to talk about, you know, if someone is bleeding severely from a major wound and Jake with all, you know, in the frame he cuts, I'm sure he looks real professional in his uniform. And if you have a calm demeanor and you're able to lower their heart rate and their blood pressure, then they're not going to bleed out as quick. And it, you know, there's a bedside demeanor, as you saying, you get to the hospital and in bedside demeanor is more about, you know, keeping them long-term in the hospital comfortable, but right. There are certain interventions. Um, how, how did the terms Dayquil and Robitussin never come up in this talk of treating COVID? I got sick a few times over the past few years and, hacking up along as I'm going to bed and it may be because I'm on the first floor and there's a vent to the basement where there's mold everywhere. I mean, one of these new England houses with a dirt floor in the basement and it's not the ammonia from the mouse pee. It's, it's the mold spores that are literally, sometimes you go down the whole walls, just fuzzy. I'm going, huh? <laughs> wonder what that is and what I'm breathing, but I feel so like we have related been- near death experience. And then I'll, I'll turn it back. Oh, I, literally the closest I feel I've ever come to death. Andreas said he fell off a, cliff maybe even a couple times but i've definitely was, been through more th- worse things than that <laughs> it was a couple weeks ago and i i had stopped coughing and my lungs got better after i started re-rolling my tobacco and not smoking fire retardant and then it was it's something that's i've noticed in the past caused lung inflammation for me but this time it was the most acute where i felt like i was drowning i was breathing in and I, there was nothing past and it was because i took out all my old stems and all my the old trimmings that from but instead of throwing out, you know, I kind of pick off the endo as they used to call it. Snoop Dogg used to call it endo being the, and, and started putting it through a sieve. OK, now Samuel Adams reportedly had this suffered from whether it was yellow fever and he went to get Ipecac from somewhere and he was writing to his wife about Ipecac. But in, in a, the days where you're growing hemp and the wind blows and the pollen from this stuff goes through, they call it a um, I mean, it's almost the size of a virus and for I've, I've learned now that um, if I'm going to do that, the windows have to be open and then I have to clear the air. And if I let it sit in the space, there's a, an irritant in the air um, and it can be quite acute to the extent where I could see how if someone presented at the, the hospital that way they would be intubated. Whereas I, I went from side to side and kind of let gravity drain the fluid and kept kind of not coughing, but you know, um, and thankfully I'm here talking to you. Today, I wasn't quite sure what to do. By the time you realize you can't breathe, I mean, there's not much of a window to. <laughs> yeah. You know, what's someone oh, going to do if they're the there? Phlegm, the phlegm and, and z- a- a- what's it called? Emphysema. I think from vaporizers, there's supposed to be a new link to that. People have to be burning careful. the lungs. Right, right. Because smoke and happens at a certain temperature. Uh, the way but- water boils and maintains the constant temperature at that boiling temperature because it's releasing the extra energy through the boiling process. But Bruce, smoking Bruce- as well. Bruce was, dis- vaporizing him, Bruce was dissatisfied in a very respectful way with our lack of uh, data about bacteria being, you know, health uh, provoking or, or disease or sickness provoking. I think we could talk a bit more about what a cell, you know, a bacteria cell is in terms of, you know, it has a 
soft cell wall to protect its ribosomes and its nucleoid. So it's just an orphan mitochondria. It has a bunch of data. It's a bunch of data in a wet cell that's easy to inject. And sure, you can consume data and you have uh, ribosome nucleic data correction protein sequences that will erase things that don't fit. So for the most part, you should be fine. But a lot well, of these- to mitochondrial DNA. I think eukaryotic cells, the one very kind of mainstream theory is that a lot of our organelles are actually- prokaryotes that somehow right. created a symbiotic way to pass through the barrier and if we have if we have data that's constantly uh, accumulating in your anatomy and all of a sudden that data starts to uh, especially if it knows how to predict certain kinds of we were talking about this before with da dr davis the uh crispr cas9 and cas12 cas9 was discovered in our dna as a system that's designed to protect against and prevent mutation from bacteria so we have for the most part systems that are designed to protect us from bacteria the problem is certain kinds of bacteria can accumulate then they can take over a zone then they can start and induce an epigenetic change i heard that someone right. came back from space and eight percent of their epigenetic their, their they compared their genome to their twin and eight percent of it had changed yeah i mean i don't know exactly what it was that caused the twin to change though because there's a lot of other arguments about radiation from the van allen belts or whatever well, but for instance, or just if magic you if you don't have a lot of food between <laughs> the ages of zero and two <laughs> even if you get a lot of food as a teenager you might not grow <laughs> as tall it, there might be again a, a trigger uh and endogenously or and uh probably the wrong word but kind of in an interior uh cascade that that perpetuates you know through adolescence and adulthood that um is triggered by it's like a certain plants if you pee on them at the right time they it's a different color and there uh, we were talking about seeds if you lick the seed or whatever spit on the seed before you plant but jake what were you gonna you had a great smirk just now i just want to elaborate <laughs> on that feeling when you <laughs> well, think about you're you're saying about the van allen radiation belt which that you know i'm glad the suits from playtex really it, it protected those <laughs> astronauts like don pettit over there oh but yeah we lost in chernobyl is clearly with creosan yeah no it's, radiation is so dangerous watch out you know yeah. uh, um, well, you know but with that one question that you were asking about now, if, if somebody can walk up and wish uh, a leg to cauterize kind of and, and with calming energy, yeah, maybe. I mean, bedside manner does play a big factor in how people perceive the situation is going. But usually the situation is going, um, go, it's already kind of going down a certain road. We do what we can to try to save somebody. But back to this whole bacteria, viruses, the way medicines work and everything. We might put something on it that will stop or, or um, increase the, aggregate, uh, you know, the aggregation of platelets to an area to clot it. But your platelets are already there. Like aspirin just stops platelets. It's an anticoagulant because it stops the production of platelets. So there's medicine that can be used to help that, but there's also, you can cauterize it or tourniquets type mm. thing. You know, people are very similar yes. to yes. codes and computers. And Andreas, you know this, like Bill Gates, he created the first computer virus, man. And now he's figuring out how to tamper with our code. So we could, a lot of people could say things aren't real or bacteria and we could get into the weeds on the data, but the real world, application is whatever they call viruses are weaponized whatever they call bacteria they're weaponized every but if what's out to get us is so small bacterial soap it doesn't mm -hmm. have a color it's smaller than an individual wavelength of any of the colors that we can perceive with our eyes and if there's something out there invading us that's out to get us that's that small there is shit all we are going to do about and that. racism won't help you <laughs> i guess the colorless say. threat the, the famous saying is if the germ theory of disease were true no one would be here to talk about it and so mm. it's a useful model the way bohr's model of the atom was very useful until we realized the orbitals were all these funky shapes and andreas did you go through that in, in chemistry where you learned yeah. to write something ATPs, out as like, i could do all the atp formula germ theory and terrain theory is the same argument as flat earth versus the round earth they're Right. False binaries, but they're not exactly anybody's true stance.
And of course they use the word germ because germ, we just had the German guy talking about the importance of the germ, you know, in the, uh, the wheat and what makes it healthy. So make germ sound dangerous, make germ sound like a bad thing. Like carbon. Yeah. I get, I think maybe Bruce, if, if this is what you're trying to get at, that we believe like that germ and nudex, like germ, germ, germ probiotics, nudex. you know, eating lots of probiotics, eating lots of bacteria, I think is very important. It can be the healthier between the options of anti or probiotic, I always err on probiotic. I think yeah. that's the way to go. I'm pro bacteria. I'm pro yeah, choice I, for bacteria. That, I agree. I think, and it, it and it, you know, I think gut fauna, you know, the fecal uh, implants, right? You remember the South Park? It's a real thing. They're taking yeah. gut indexes of fecal matter from people like Olympic runners from Ethiopia, and then implanting that in Midwestern moms and then all of a sudden they sleep like a quarter as often as they used to and they can run all the time and they're digesting faster and their metabolism speeds up so bacteria clearly can do a lot um, Bath, are you back burning the candle matter, faster or you? but can bacteria mind control you i kind of believe everything can influence your mind they do on bugs well going back to what jake was saying about his uniform even when he puts that on it's a type of kind of preparation and maybe not physical armor. And yeah, I don't mean to engage in magical thinking or overstate things. Like I said, I can only be humble. Firemen are magical. I think thankful we all agree. for people like you that serve the community the way and willing to continue to do so. Um, the, the idea though, that um, the person, as you said, you're not going to magically cauterize a leg by thinking about it. Um, there are maybe moments where, again, if you're calm in the, the appearance of you in a uniform to some people that elicits fear, certainly. But hmm. if it's a medical uniform, oftentimes, you know, care has arrived. Um, the videos from last messages were that were kind of all grainy and distorted of people getting sick in China and then forces kind of showing up to address this and block people in or out of the mm -hmm. hospital or control the situation. I saw a different cut where instead of it being grainy and, and move, it was just a framed shot of sick people. And then a whole bunch of other people that were willing to put on a uniform and help and face what they could have for all anyone knew at the time was a completely life-threatening, completely contagious disease. And it's so interesting how the, it's like the, uh, the, the min minority report. And on one hand, if you saw it as a citizen, maybe you saw your government showing up to help. And by the time it made it way through the airwaves and was sensationalized um, as opposed to sense makeationalized, it's another word like a paradox and moronical that I've, and try to popularize, but um, try just just trying to tie different threads of the conversation. You were saying, yeah, that uniform. Um, so so for instance, the, the parallel I can draw for myself. My whole life, I've heard breathe in through your nose, and out through your mouth. Mm -hmm. Especially if someone's in distress, um, oftentimes, or as a paramedic, is that an instruction that you've heard? Yeah, especially give, hyperventilating. Or? You know, the only thing that masks, especially cloth masks, are good for or if you're having a panic attack and you're breathing off too much carbon and you can breathe that back in that but it that's took me going it, to bikram yoga same effect as an old paper bag you know where people are blown in an old paper bag but the really a lot of and you're absolutely right a presence whether it's and you go through these rituals a, a preacher he'll he'll go through his own ritual by putting on his own certain things and getting up there and we all have rituals to act an archetype totems prayers whatever to put us in a certain state of vibration um but yeah man totally right and so for the, the only time it really actually resonated with me or that it got through that breathing in through your so nose i, and I, through I, your I mouth, was gonna forget about a super chat i know it's gonna disappear on me so inside right. of the ages ukraine is a colonialist stronghold and laundromat we passed that subject, but I agree. And then Plan X Hunter says, for the grift, brother. And yes, I agree. I also that appreciate Hotep, and agree. Hotep Jesus always talks about the... Uh, I was... Yeah, uh, you, Ukraine's Alex the new Stein, Israel, in my opinion. And Giffy. Alex Stein just got a uh, grifter of the year. And I was both jealous but proud because I feel like he did work harder, you know. But He's grifted a lot, and I love him, man. <laughs> 99, five, it's five. Like, what is it? Culture right? jamming is what they're calling it now. And Zertus, I proposed to you via text a name for our podcast, but I, I, I almost dare not oh, speak it out loud. I forgot what it was, though. But you told me, like, in the middle of the night. The Jackie so Kill JFK podcast. We'll just Oh, that's Until no, we that's get the, the modern. No, sorry. <laughs> Anyways. You can just watch the video. Um so wait, wait, so wait, wait, the wait, idea wait. though Before that we go the breathing the breathe... in through your nose and oh, out okay, through your mouth. Breathe. This is super yeah. sciencey for just a quick second. But after this, brain, gut gut mind control of bugs, because I'm gonna forget. So just that's okay. the next one. Okay. okay. And but this is to help all the other kind of skeptics out there. You know, it's like 
when you're doing math, you have to write out the work and say, like, but teacher, I don't want to. And it's like, no, if, if someone is helping you and they're telling you to breathe through your nose and out through your mouth, even if it's difficult, even if you are hyperventilating or, um, so going to Bikram yoga and in Boston and Harvard square, it's known for being one of the hottest studios in the country, 110 to 115 degrees. And I'm in there sucking wind through my Actually, not drinking water during the 90 minute class because the, it's not going to get into my system. Uh, anyways, you might as well go in hydrated. But the so, um, and this might be more Zerdis is again kind of a I embrace my inner nerd, bug that word. But the Bernoulli effect. So, when you have two ping pong balls and you blow between them, they move together. And the Bernoulli effect also applies to when air is moving, that if it narrows the two factors. You have these long, thin tubes that push the air to the bottom of your lungs. And that's the rest and relax. The top half of your lungs is when you see a bear in the woods. You, you gasp and you fill up the upper half of your lungs. And it actually produces cortisol and adrenaline response. Whereas when you breathe in through your nose, if you really focus on it and you allow it to expand the bottom half of your lungs, it's going to begin to release chemicals that are, again, it's not going to, it's not a magical tourniquet and it doesn't, it's not going to suffice for intervention, uh, especially in certain drastic situations. But um, yeah, I wonder how close to a heart attack or a stroke I've been in those classes before the teachers are going, if you're seeing spots, that's normal. I'm like, yeah, that's a normal sign of heat stroke and get, get the F out of my way. I'm going out into the, I'm going to go turn Kund the shower. Kundalini, Kundalini always made me see rainbows and spots and like, kind of, you start to like lose your, connection to reality it's called and you cooking spend... your brain it's higher than your body temperature and your liver probably tastes a little better after you take a hot yoga class no hmm. well sorry it's yeah, that's job. fair mind control though jake all right so in terms of bugs uh you were just saying bugs control by your hiv at 810 degrees that's what they said though for me. i don't know about that but all right gut fauna Denatures bacteria like bacteria does it control you know not just I mean, we've seen mushrooms control uh, the mind of an ant, but what, in what circumstances are you thinking about bugs getting controlled by, or animals being controlled by uh, bacteria? Well, whether it's bacteria or just tiny little parasites, what we're mm -hmm. seeing with um, a lot of people who have <laughs> tried this world economic forum, foisted bug and cricket, protein and all of these bug foods that people are eating whatever bacteria that that insects naturally carry it's different than mammals and a lot of people are getting sick because their their biome doesn't really mix with ours it's almost like they're terraforming not only the planet but also people to eat the same shit as these reptilian overlords dude like uh but even with this a hairworm parasite look at into praying mantises and the hairworm parasite that's there's a lot of strange things outside of what species on species will show yeah. under microscopes when they're looking at the right. back did you guys know that mk ultra didn't just drug dolphins and jerk them off and hang kids over bridges on lsd oh, yeah. but actually gave crazy parents i'll get you mk ultra Paranichian bacterial parasites, mind control parasites to otters. Yeah, that's right. These poor things. And what, Adorable what happened, little oyster eating. Well, not when they get Paranichian. <laughs> they'll just burrow a hundred miles an hour. They swim as fast as they can in a direction. And if it's down, they'll swim until their heads implode. Right. And this was a thing that in the 90s, I heard about this because I was into marine biology in Santa Cruz and there was a huge problem where they were saying there's paranichin in the water and they didn't know where it came from. And it took into, I mean, we all kind of figured it out, but they wouldn't admit that this is what it was from until like 2013. So I heard know, there was a bug a that moves in fits and starts so fast because it's eye receptors actually need to catch up with the photons. It's able to kind of, and they have these reflexes. And I saw a travel show, like a very brief story of, and someone on the way out of the market, Oh sure. I'll try a cricket leg or something. Right. And they well, were I mean, coughing for a long time because the little hairs, you know, it was a practical joke. Of course, you don't, you know, granted a protein powder ideally would be processed beyond the extent where there'd be any of those. They're putting cricket powder fibers, in popcorn and, and chips and everything. Now. Yeah. I, so yeah. this is going to be a new base soy. Day. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And it's so what do you soy. think we're not about gonna have soy boys in the future, bro? We're going to have bug boys. We're going to have, we're gonna have bug boys. 
Bug so what, boys, bro. That's okay. So this is more a question for you. What happens on a bug farm? farm real quick, like, if all the cows say. get loose, that's no wait, big wait, wait. deal. Hold on, but see, if you're Jake. breeding ten thousand crickets and they get loose, oops. Yeah, the, 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 I think the it's called plague. The plague. The plague. But Jake, what were you about to say? Sorry, I missed it. Toxoplasmosis. From grandma's boy. Oh, that's toxoplasmosis. Very common. And they, when they do autopsies on the people who die in high speed motorcycle crashes, doing all this dangerous shit, they all got it. And a right. lot of us get it through, you get it through cats. You know, pregnant women shouldn't be changing litter boxes. Dude, toxoplasmosis that's an old is. Wives tale that, that, again, I'll never question the science behind it. And I'll... You love cats, don't the you? The only Stephanie? time I will deify my partner is when she is carrying another life. Of course, otherwise, she's a cat. it's an unhealthy relationship. But, you know. I feel like, yeah, you should be careful about mind control the parasites. The closer it gets to that due date, she gets more and more slack. That's all I know. Yeah. I mean, these are these are the kinds of things that I've people been should... eight months and getting in a fight and being left alone. What the fuck? Anyways. Wait, so wait, hold on. We were at a thought, and it's gone. Bacteriophages, mind control, sea otters. The cricket mm-hmm. boys. Cricket boys. Thank you, Jake. You're on Bug top boys. of it. So, so here's the thing. Instead of it, soy, but okay. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah solid. Yeah. Because solid. A, lot dudes, a lot of dudes <laughs> who thought that, that they were... Joke. A lot of dudes that thought they were vegan... There's if you're willing to go vegan, you're willing to eat crickets as far as I'm concerned. It's not yeah. going to take that much more effort. Maybe not right away, but I think unless you're a Vedic, you know, Dharma following your karma, even then you're you're likely to be manipulated by people because you don't even see it. It doesn't say, hey, new with cricket powder on it. I'm seeing vegan esque looking organic, pro- very plain markings, uh, matte bags of popcorn organic that have cricket powder added to everything now so what's going to happen in they terms used to of use insects for diet starbucks but oh it's yeah not, it wasn't well, it wasn't to change the nutritional profile it's because it was a, a color the theory, red beetle the red beetle's dye. color yeah they use that for, red dye number or whatever yeah i mean but so if we but anytime you right you're just mixing proteins and we don't know long term if what if do you think is gonna happen yeah what do you think the insect the analogy of an ant walking into a skyscraper and somehow rearranging the floors and the stair structure is the idea of there's whether it be dmt or other spirit molecules we have a mechanism that we're, we're delicate creatures we're very sensitive right there was maybe in the x files there was one guy who was a super sensor and they would go stick him on a cliffside and he would like smell the petrichor and, and predict any any oncoming uh yeah so uh, how, how do we look out for each other yeah, public service announcement: Stop smoking fucking cigarettes that don't are smoke crickets that have fire <laughs> retardant on the paper. Look it up. The, you know, the, there's a scene from the movie where was it Valkyrie, and it's a famous one where Hitler, where Tom Cruise has redubbed. Oh yeah, where he's always redubbed rant, ranting about something else. At one point, it was how do the Patriots keep winning? And they've it kind of they they make it fit with the dialogue. There is one for FSC cigarettes. If you were gonna let anything run, it's a YouTube video. If not, go look up. Uh, yeah. So, okay. Cricket flower. If we have DNA mutated by, I mean, there's supposed to have cow DNA is partially human now for meeting cows for right. so for long. And we're cloning cows and eating that just to make sure it's the same DNA, just to really hit the message home. Uh, but I've had Cynthia Sue Larson on my show. I'm going to get a bucket you've... of my, pro- I have some vegan protein powders. Cynthia Sue Larson. I've had Cynthia Sue Larson on my show before, and she's the reality shifter lady who talks about AI from the future, what came back in time and talked to her through a reality shift. I think it's called through, through like technology. Right. And said that in the future, like now that there's an insectoid time traveling, uh, simultaneous humanoid hominid race thing that is, they're, they're, they're mixing their DNA with our DNA for the next generation because it'll be easier for us and everybody in the future if humans have more uh, hive mind mentality or better oh, at, yeah. at being hive mind. Oh, yeah. Well, there you go. Right. So, I mean, I just wonder, what do you what do you guys really think about this idea of, of you know, the cricket? Uh, in- oh, I think it's evidence of lost technology and we're a species with amnesia. And if we knew how to make this and again, we really get to work out some monetization of the sponsorships, but I'm happy to call attention because I've never seen anything like this. It's a biblical recipe and it's got no carbs in it, but it's got, again, it's so organic pea protein, organic sprouted bean, uh, brown rice, organic amaranth, organic buckwheat sprout. All right. All right. I'm all used to that stuff. Corella sprout, chia. So when they said a slice of bread, Mm -hmm. if that's what's in your bread, but somehow they found an industrial are there no, process are there where they make a powder out of just the protein and all the no, carbs from all those grains are just gone. But there's no cricket in that protein, right? You just got 
that's just health food. Correct. And that's what I'm saying is okay. like, you know, the scene in Idiocracy <laughs> where we're not sure is going through the IQ test and there's someone in there, there's, they've got, you know, a green triangle block and a red circle and a blue square and they're trying to put them through the hole. And this is a time in the future where everyone's intelligence has kind of degenerated. And the guy kind of hunches over as he's missing, almost like don't cheat off my test. And I feel like that's our approach to health to some extent, whether it be to birth, to say, oh, is this what you were trying to do? Like a, a non-call pre-planned C-section. Or, and again, it's like, is this what we were trying? The whole time we came up with protein powder, whey powder. But this to me, again, I bought it on subscription. It's all Amazon. trying to, it's this all. This one's unopened. As a, but Say again, it's Jack? all slave food to make us weaker, to make us. Right. They're feeding us what they want their food to, to taste like. <laughs> I truly think, right? you know, it, it, it's that dark. This reality is that dark where they are just trying to get cheaper and lower ways to feed the slave population. And a we get bean sprout, a and flax shit. seed sprout, a sunflower seed, a pumpkin seed sprout, a sesame seed sprout. All right, well, that's true. We could it's get just sesame bad, and someone pumpkin was an seed alchemist sprouts. With but how much does that thing we cost? Should have been and instead of doing it to make proteins out of bugs. Like, how much does that thing cost? That's $20, though. Pro the cricket powder is going to be, like, free. They're going to make sure that most people eat crickets. And we'll when you leave this stuff piled up, that's what in Beirut with all the – um the flower that exploded because of maybe right. an electromagnetic i've noticed is that what they're blaming the beirut the on they're saying it was a flower mill like in minnesota that's everything's hilarious. a mistake man there was no bomb it was an electrical strike because flower. they didn't degauss it a ship yeah. showed up and transferred an electric charge and it it's Couple. quite explosive it's like just ping like pong the philadelphia ball. experiment right dude so okay that's another thought uh in terms of stranger things have you seen stranger things means have you seen stranger things in the show stranger things right because they're mm -hmm. saying the montauk projects right so what do you no, i do stopped you think... with the montauk fault that was the og you guys are all on the, the subplot B jake montauk go... fault is a book that oh, hmm. jake go deep on the montauk project for a second and then we'll go we can exp... what do you what is the montauk project for people that don't know yeah, well, if people want to read the book with like Preston Nichols, I believe it was who came out with that book and like any experiencer, whether you want to listen to Donald Marshall, Matt Spears or Preston Nichols, you can that they're st so strange and they seem very outlandish when someone talks about the Montauk project where hmm. they use children, children like a baby snake. If you get bit by it, it doesn't know how to control its venom, its potency and children they are they don't know how to un you know control their emotional energetic output and their consciousness is You're saying uh, the adult snake won't release the venom when it bites because it might have to sacrifice its fangs in the process or something or no it just knows how to it just knows how to release the right amount of venom and mm. the right amount of mental output in certain situations like kid, children don't yet have a calcified pineal gland through medication and fluoridated water where they they were using children in the Montauk chair to psychically open up doorways to dimension. If I told you that, that there are chiropractors who will perform a chiropractic procedure on a baby that's been born via C-section in order to replicate its skull having come through, it's not the birth canal. I'm pretty pretty sure it's it's part of a reproductive organ, but, but to close again, in birth, the skull, like I said, is is a is a word we've come up with to justify perpetuation of violence again but why would you want to have less room in your head you know i think that's the thing yeah <laughs> don't squish your head it's fine but wait 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 hold on sorry you were yeah, saying so with the montauk saying, chair in the dimensions. montauk project it's interesting because this is all in my opinion he was talking about the know, gland pine right you know there. andreas i'm deep yeah. i'm deep in the conspiracy i'm the rabbit in the rabbit hole i yeah. believe most in, in quantum leap that you need kids because they're like more plastic still and it's they're able to connect zinc. Yeah. Monsters Inc. is the perfect allegory for what they do. They scare children and they harvest their energy. And then the second one, I have little boys. I'm, it's twisted how they tell you the truth. And then the second Monsters Inc., they realize that laughter, just like worship, is more powerful. And it is a better uh, energetic uh, food for them. Loosh, if you want to go into the Gnostic mm. verbiage of it. But how's that, how's so with the Montauk chair in Stranger Things, they use these media... Uh, we know who media was uh, <laughs> mythologically, and they use things like Netflix. It's the bullet in the press is the media information post haste, and they just use Stranger Things to get everybody to love 
the evils that they do. It's like they show us all of the war movies because we think we're the good guys, even though Operation Paperclip are the reason why the war movies are being played. So it's, it's a <laughs> strange reality, but Stranger Things is very, very much so based in truth. Right. I mean, so if this is going on, which it seems like it is, and there are multiple dimensions, or, you know, you know, because that's what that, I think that Cynthia Sue Larson's on to something that there might be interaction going on between different moments. Whether what are your thoughts on times. the director? Andreas, Susan Larson really, is the director. She's a reality shift. You on Real, Andreas, Andreas, yeah. um, radio waves they say that radio waves can travel backwards in time so a lot of times when people like her talk in my opinion it, it's it seems at least scientifically possible to transmit frequencies radio waves is just a frequency you know transmission but thoughts that's like oh that was interstellar what, like love, channeling love what was she able would to experience transcend I think like neutrinos, for instance. Jake, I, Jake I, did you see? Did you see Interstellar, the movie? Yeah, I hated the ending. <laughs> well, but that that was kind of one of the fundamental concepts was he couldn't get data and bits through, but he could get her to sense love and yeah, it was love, man. Through, through, through time, I felt like uh, you know there are explanations through the 20th century of different types of subatomic particles starting really in the 70s but then before that there are just types of, of particles and different kinds of wave particle duality questions that were coming up around the neutrino and the neutrino seems to kind of cut in and out of reality or our plane of existence whatever that means those are just then, big octopus tanks those are not for detecting neutrinos who's effing kidding who man you buy that shit no, no, I'm just thinking that. In the, <laughs> I understand in the, we can make photo 50s, sensors that. In, in the 50s, though, there was. There's the enough... muon detectors and the pyramid. Yeah, dude, it's a moron detector to see if you fucking believe it, you <laughs> idiot. No, well, the sorry, Mickle, anyway. no, the, the Mickelson Morley experiment, you know, there, there's this idea of. <laughs> the you know, boson. E right. If there's the bo bozo. Uh, if there anyways. is, if, if there is ether, if there's ether and there's this idea that there could be enough density that there can be multiple. Uh, re if there is dark matter, which okay, there's not evidence. We're talking about scalar it. waves moving backwards. No, I, um... no, just if the, if we're one of the radio stations that are simultaneously existing that are folded on top of each other, and even we might think that all times and all places are similarly folded, different arrangements of symmetry on top of each other. That all density is a quantum entangled thing. There could be that every single. So if someone says, "Did you grow up around here?" The right answer is, "I don't know. A lot of places look the same." My parents told me this is where I grew up. But. I mean, that, that's true too. And then also, just that any moment can be reprinted. Like if you have a femto printer instead of a nano printer, you could print an arrangement of atoms that are structured like this moment, right? And that's a thought experiment, and it's supposed to make you realize that determinism, in principle, is interesting to entertain. But we will neither be able to influence or predict or detect unless we can influence. That's the mass. point of the. If you're, yeah, if I believe that they smash particles together at CERN. I don't believe for a second that they have sensors that are picking up the little curly cues and they're friggin' interpreting it as a. And then they get another billion dollars of funding to build. This is real as NASA. Probably, uh, well, yeah. come on. It's the micro I, to the macro. I still think though the idea that there are there are densities yes. beyond our our existence. I, I don't know if I can prove that dark matter exists using the math that we've used based on a non etherous space. I'll give you that. Right. But if, but, but still it's called the, dust, we can't see it because between us and it there's dust. It's the idea that when you're standing in the forest and you look out in any direction, you see a tree, there's no gap. So why does the same thing not apply to the stars? It's called dust, my friends. Well, <laughs> if everything is flat, and everything is existing simultaneously in one lifetime, all lifetimes existing in a simultaneous Omdahl array that are happening stacked on top of each other, then it explains a lot about extraterrestrials, demons, light beings, pe people from the future, futures that are existing that seem to be interacting mm. with us. If there's one electron that is simultaneously flowing through the entire circuit of all possible moments, uh, you know, granted, and, and if on the surface of every electron orbital is recorded the history of all the other histories and well, if all the other histories are happening simultaneously because they're just, I think that's the idea an event horizon, you get to kind of almost an infinite dense, uh, in the right. same here, a point, a point where Dude. so many of the moments are next to each other. I they... see. That's the other thing. Andreas is moving in this direction of content. 
He's owning it. He's nailing it. We're going to get the timestamps in there. So it's easier to jump in and out of <laughs> instead of picking to watch the whole episode or not. Good call. But I believe again, outside of his uh, knowledge and know-how and ability to spin not only a script and, and narrate something, but to create a visual narrative along with it that is, you know, next level and compelling and hypnotizing. He also has a Rolodex that seems to be quite deep. And I, I almost believe that right, if he tweets it in the same hair next week, I'm going to be a fly on the wall and it's going to be my job not to say anything, but or like, like, I'll read the super chats or something. I, I don't know. <laughs> of which so I, I'm excited for, for you, Andreas, outside of what, what we're talking about. What are you? Oh, I thought you meant more. Gen, uh, you mean more generally. OK. I was just thinking, though, in terms of if realities are existing simultaneously, I think it's plausible, but they're not dimensions. That's something we mis we misconstrue. And it might be that there are beings that are able to perceive different amounts of dimensions than us in the sense that there could be a Pac-Man like entity or there could be a fifth dimensional or seventh dimensional entity or something like that, which those would be on uh, would exist in simultaneously this dimension, that dimension and other it would six instead of three or four. Right. Because we're existing in like the kind of a four dimensional editing. string. Mm -hmm. Right. But there could be there could be higher dimensional conscious entities. I think we're creating that with AI. I think AI will be aware yep. of, uh, especially if it can exist in the past and in the future. If it's able to do that, uh, which is what Cynthia Sue Larson has suggested it's doing by traveling from the past through machines that have been left on since the '60s, you know, because we have that. Then theoretically, yeah, multiple dimensional uh, entities will start to integrate humans into a, into their system and vice versa. So that that's that transhumanist jump in 2030 we're talking about that could be uh a, is that it could a be system a of awareness and perception of these other realms or are they actually impeding on our reality is interesting andreas i think do you do you think that dimensions um they're almost a metaphor for frequencies or states of awareness like states of consciousness in my opinion i think that a lot of these dimensions only seem reachable through le certain levels of consciousness like the dmt realm people have a similar experience in the same dimension but you have to do certain things um like people wake up in heaven and hell every day here right. i think that those seem to be like what you're saying overlapping or at least touching frequencies on like a radio dial of existence we're just measuring a certain amount in a small bandwidth of those yeah but i think your height they, your high breath and width uh height breath and width have to do with the gut fauna the the trillion the 30 trillion bacterial organism the cellular uh system your nervous system all of these things that are connected together that are somehow making up a thing which we're describing as having as you said awareness it's having awareness, it's using all the these psychedelic sensors. psychedelic awareness, meaning mind expanding. And what well, I've heard a yeah. good analogy is that sometimes the, the drug the or the spirit changing. molecule is like planting a flag in the woods. So at least you know what you're looking for. So that idea of the concept of, of nirvana or oneness or being able, I think Lex Friedman most recently talked about being able to tap into this universal sense of kindness and love that it, sometimes maybe it feels like the whole world's against you or the things are unfair, but in reality, the way humanity and culture seems to be structured, there's always going to be a, someone who's sympathetic and whether or not you can access that feeling and t tune into it um, in any given moment is, uh, I mean, also your DNA, ride we're all riding. your DNA is a series of clockwork springs that are, this is acid as opposed to alkalinic. So the acids are burning and exploding and then they're causing uh, the next series of DNA ribonucleic acid uh, folds to predict based on what it's seen explode behind it what will be the correct explosion in the future based on all the data it has so it's creating these fireworks shows that are repeating and it's designed to keep kind of a, a homeostasis it's changing but it's also keeping data and trying to figure out what data is it's supposed to keep so there's there's all of that going on with what the human condition is and those parts of it can be implemented in an ai system because all of a sudden you can have integrated circuits networked the way we log into a thing and that's going to be interesting because humans will slowly start to contain more and more and more of ai and less and less of themselves as you start to use the AI network instead of your n local recall for data, for memories, mm -hmm. for experiences, um, that kind of thing. But I also think that there's probably just the same kind of life as us uh, existing in 
different times and therefore times are different uh, arrangements of the same material that they're here now. So we think of like aliens, but aliens are probably just, you know, the way we think of, oh, this we're looking at light. NASA tells us that light is is from a star millions Dead of years stars. ago. Yeah, yeah. But that might mean that it's this we're looking at ourselves in a different moment. That might be the metaphor there. And so we're like, oh, it is very likely that there are reflective surfaces, just like there is dust that occludes our view of things that we may very well be looking back. The moon maybe is a reflection of the earth 10,000 or 10 years ago or 10,000 years in the future. I mean, not because it's even that distant, but it also could be because of the way uh, radiation is being filtered, you know, because we're using and we're talking about radiation. It's a giant lens. It's our atmosphere. Maybe it's bending the light and it just fools our eyes. Well, the mountains are also could be old, ancient, petrified titans and giants and shit just like the mountains are ancient petrified trees there's some weird faces in the mountains man and the titan two decades without eating so then they get covered they look like part of the mountain and then something twitches nearby and they they eat it and then rain of fire was there again for a minute seemed like such a bad movie at the time and now i think it was reason bro now i now i realize i I like it what was the movie Rain of Fire, which is a great movie, but at the time I was like, Matthew "This is another this is too you. weird." And I, I, I was going to say, it's, maybe it's his dimples or his tan. I was going to mention but, Interstellar again too, but yes. But, yeah, but these, but <laughs> movies like Rain of Fire, I have a certain feeling I feel almost invariably where I'll watch a movie and be like, "This movie doesn't make any sense," and it'll afterwards say, "Based on a true story." And so, just because of the proximity of that feeling in my gut, I feel like Rain of Fire. It was too real. It wasn't a normal movie because it's based on reality. That's just the way things. That must have just been a, a Beowulf uh, metaphor that was perfectly succinct. But we are probably living in a world where there are things that live. Uh, you know, in Stellium Seven's channel has talked about this idea of there being um, giant Titan. elephant-like titans that are mountainous and I was they become Stellium fossilized. Titan, but yes, if I were, true. Sorry. Yeah, but Stellium Seven is <laughs> a YouTube channel Mike Wilkerson has. He's the first hacker, one of the first hackers to be arrested in history. I have an interview. My mind's still channel. blown just being one degree of separation away from all the content creators that I've been following for years and. Dude, um, I know the next thing we got to do is party with Kevin Bacon, I guess. I guess that's, dude, that's what it hell is. Yeah. Bacon with bacon. <laughs> <laughs> right. But then again, my, that's my the brother, perfect name, though. Like, I mentioned this a few podcasts ago. He started Etsy. Right. And so this idea of being around people that have transcended in some way and blazed their own trail and then letting that just be par for the course and not overreacting to someone's celebrity, treating them like a human which oftentimes perhaps is difficult. Oh my God. Everybody's a human worship and celebrities, are the Except worst humans Hanks too. Are... All the, way, all I've got the, your dry cleaning done, Andreas. All the, the, this, <laughs> all the, uh, all the celebrities I know though, it's like, they're, they're decent enough. Like I like them as people, but there's a thing that happens where you get scared because crazy people will threaten you. And then you also start to hide more and you become more and more introverted and then because you're an extrovert you're missing the introvert you're missing the people because of introversion so you become more and more of an extrovert i I think it's like it's just it's a necessary consequence of being a uh, any sort of celebrity that you become more and more detached from reality and everyone wants to say oh i won't do that but sam tripoli for instance who i believe you you had a few interactions with Oh, I love on your channel. We talked to but, Sam. So that. there's the idea. I think he came from maybe dog. an adult adult yeah. entertainment background or something. I got a few a gist of that. And right, you kind of have to move on from that lifestyle. And he, he's definitely he's got his own. One of these days, and, though, we'll make a movie with porn stars. But yeah, he's but from thing, Armenian he, Hollywood. What do you expect? Even he then experiences something. I don't know the exact name of the movie. I brought this up. There's a Nicolas Cage movie where he's doing a spot on Sam Tripoli the whole time being introduced to women in certain contexts and not getting in over his head. And then there's a scene in the pool with a guy who reminds me a lot of Andreas too. And, and the idea that we people appropriate certain narratives and it's there's so much media being created and released on a daily basis, little 10 minute short films that you could have your own private troop of, uh, you know, you're just amused to some extent. They have access maybe to the surveillance data on us. And, and then, you know, there's, you see someone, a character that reminds you of something in your life. And, but when it's a whole movie and you're going, wait, does no one else realize that Nick Cage is doing the Sam Tripoli? And for, it's also bunch... we, it's also our relationship to things. So it's like the, people the become famous the because short. the movie before that was with Mark Wahlberg and um, Will. Oh, Ferrell, where he, yeah, were they? And it was they supposed to be this whole metaphor, this deep metaphor about. And then no one got it, so they just made the big short <laughs> instead or afterwards. But we we so we'll many... often 
so many masterful artworks that are we often connect things to people that we have familiarity with right so it's like oh this is like you know san tripoli but it's like how many guys i know from armenia and la that have been through what he's had to go through and one of the things that makes him special is he survived it you know because oh, a lot of people don't and the slant in his mouth and the, and the way he talked yeah i just yeah, saw but the they, previews, but... They're, but it's it's a perfect you know that's a perfect and i'm sure nick cage dealt with uh growing up in LA because Nicholas Coppola, right, is his real name. And he went to, was it Santa Monica High School, I think? He spent, or was it Hollywood High School? I forget. But he spent all this time uh, in LA during the Iranian uh, exodus, during the, you know, Iranian Jewish uh, exodus as well, during the, the Persian Gulf War, during the little Armenian uh, explosion where the population changed. And there's a huge shift in Hollywood. Hollywood's become because of that very different and it, i think it's awesome in a lot of ways except for the young turks but besides that I yeah think that sucked yeah other than that and it I is mean, it is easy to get that was a real scar on the community. And, and connect dots that aren't there there's a movie greenberg that my sister-in-law was in as a, a bit part because she was giving sewing lessons to the du- famous husband wife director du- uh, duo and the main character reminded me a whole lot of my brother he wasn't cast in the movie you know his his wife, and he is a kind of a real weird character. And so when someone does a character study, a, a bit actor or a method actor, they do they owe anything in particular? You know, if Nick Cage comes out and admits he was doing an impersonation of Sam Tripoli, you know, the, all names have been changed or redacted to protect people's identities. But it, it's interesting, you know, in a day and age where but you can play someone else's YouTube video or steal their content, um, sh- should that, we be anything but flattered if we think people are? You wouldn't game. download an ideology, would you? You know, yeah. it was Ross Trent from uh, SNL with. Um, oh yeah, I remember that it, was so. That was me. I felt I mean, so. I, I, I felt so. I read uh, a book on Rastafari. I told my parents some change in religions. You know, <laughs> that I felt attacked. I feel like you know everything that Andy Samberg does is just an insult to Santa Cruz. Like he went to a party at our Paul Sweet House one time, and after that, he made like a video about three things, like the political scientist guy. Ross Trent, I forget the other one, but I was like, this is just mean. You're just like literally picking on us. And I, I don't know, I, I love and it. Then we these kind of, we, it's called meta moments now where on SNL, you'll actually have Mark Wahlberg come upon the set while Sandberg is doing that. Hey, hey, go, what's up? Yeah, how you doing, buddy? And they're like, do, and so what reality is falling apart. On seams. one hand, you can write, be, yeah, there's too many writers certain in the things room. Or, it became it became like the white uh like time limit where you know the the like reality TV shows were projecting all the time and you all of a sudden the sky just emptied out and it was just this blinding white light and you're like what is that like that's four p.m. Eastern Standard Time there's nothing there's nothing left we filmed all the reality all we have left are you know what's left of it is the YouTubers you know and that's where we we no, kinda... no, now there's TikTokers so so Jake what's what have been your highest number of view counts and what have been the topics of those. Were they something topical and and daily trendy or were they more big picture things or no, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that there's so many of them, right? Aren't they short? Yeah. There's so many of us out here making content and doing the best we can. Just like we're all saying right now that that's in my opinion, why internet clout while views, while none of that shit matters. The only thing that matters is to do what's right and authentically you to the best of your ability. So I just put out content. I put out, multiple videos every day. Respect, respect. Um, I use my discipline through my profession to really manage my time wisely. Like on TikTok, it was filled with just people dancing and lip sync, you know, mouthing words over other people's videos and shit. It was very dead, informationally dead in there. Um, there was really so something yeah. people used to do content. person to uh, person. Back in the 20s, there was an actor, Daniel Kay, who was a famous, he was kind of good singing and dance and yeah. Um. I. But what? There's one scene in one of his movies where he's he's like kind of chauffeuring a younger family member around, and as she gets out of the car, they do this kind of. Stephen Colbert does it on his show. If you've been in the same musical production that someone else has been in, you know the lines, and you can kind of sing something back and forth pretty quickly, similar to the TikTok format. And he at the end of it, he goes TikTok, TikTok. And so again, for all you know, that's just a coincidence. And the fact that someone did a little song and dance routine back and forth you know, in a movie that was black and white. And now there's something called TikTok that gives people ticks. And it's only a matter of time before their eyes are doing this. When um... Well, so for me on there, I was doing these short videos with just 
all different content, but consistently pointing out the holes in the plot line, all the narratives that they give us every single day. There's a million holes. Anybody who pays attention for more than five seconds can find the CGI, the weird moon landing footage for Biden when he's saying he's good for coronavirus. There's just a million incidents every single day. So my, I have one video recently about red lights over the ocean that has like 3 million views. I got one about a portal nice. that's got like 4 million views. Um, I put a video it, about it people induce... talking about the new world order and that's got like 50,000 views. And that was only a couple of days ago. So it just depends, but right. that's why I get in trouble as well. I was going to say, well, yeah. he, he gets in trouble a lot though, because every once in a while, and every once in a while I'll be trying, that's why I had to finally get your phone number because I'll be like, Hey, let's do a show. And then TikTok will shut him down for like a month because he yep. put out a video that if he'd put it out like a month later, it probably everyone already knows it, but he's like the first to put that kind of content out or something. And they're just, they're freaked out. By it's called it. being over the mark. And <laughs> when Alex Jones says it, he refers to the idea of being in an airship or kind of over your target. But in the YouTube sense, if you have too big a following, if, if, Zerdis already was, was getting a million views for each one of his, they'd be censoring it. They'd be, they'd be, there'd be someone pulling and editing little bits in and out or influencing yeah. the conversation in one way or another. I, I like the authenticity for, for a few bucks you can get, you know, for reading the super chats. Are, are we behind on them or we'll, I don't know. I think we're loyal to that audience. I think you see Tim cast and other they start off their stream and they get 500 bucks off the bat every time they go on. Yeah. Andreas is like the, the Chris Stapleton of country music. Andreas is like that for conspiracy. <laughs> You're the, the ghost writer for a lot of people's fucking hits, bro. Man, but so I mean, the idea of having a psychedelic experience without consuming an intoxicant. And this, you know, the last uh, uh, show that I was on with Andreas, we had a SpaceX engineer who had his kombucha, his brew went sour. I actually wrote a poem years ago about a brew that went sour but his went way in a, a psychedelic way and being unaware that you've been your mind is now in an expanded state psychedelia expansion of the mind and when you're it's paradigm shifting when you present here is the norm here's what you accept as truth but how could that be true look here's the obvious the the idea that caesar couldn't have been born via c-section because his mother historiologically was recorded as having been alive 10 years later in the paradigm you're supposed to accept that C-section meant death. And I understand there was a time and in certain places, if there aren't the resources that may not be possible or ideal or, um, but the, yeah, sorry. I'll, now I'm talking too much. <laughs> Fill yeah, in space perhaps. But all right. Well, you know, we are coming up at the end of our, our hours, but we will be back. We'll do this again. But being aware uh, with your audience, yeah, they, they may be tuning in and it's like, why am I so intrigued to keep watching these videos? And is it make forcing me to adopt a nihilistic point of view that I don't believe in anything? Or is it just that we need to have, we need to slow down and have a fundamental reexamination of the things we see in here every day? There's a bit like, of both, like man. inf, like inf, Fidel wars, info war. Are we in fake like fo <laughs> fau info wars or fidelity? They, we need some more is fidelity. It info wars. That's what's coming in the future. It's going to be a bunch of um, women that are uh, breeding themselves to go into space. So they have lower calorie consumption. They're small. We'll and never that, go to space. It's, it's space nympho wars. It's, it's it's a form of smallpox where we get overridden in the siege there. warfare by people that are much smaller. I'm right. not more concerned about being in formation. Uh, yeah, with information, you know, but the yeah, idea dude, that uh, it's, it's after great, World War II, really. Operation as far Paperclip. as the TikTok goes and all of these things, um, I think it's just important to still have fun. It's like Owen Benjamin says, you know, this it, 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 nobody's having more fun, man. There's nothing more fun than sitting in the back of the theater during a shitty movie, making fun of it with your boys, you know, throwing popcorn at the screen. Uh, that's what we're I doing. want to produce it's content that Alex Jones watches while he's taking a shit and giggles. And, and because someone's <laughs> created that content for me, you know, and he deserves to have those time and to be able to just disengage and feel like he's also leaning into the unknown. And someone like you making daily multiple videos a day, putting that content out there. Um, being it's able to you gotta, you gotta be relax. having fun. You can't be because so many people get so angry, they're so scared, they're so worried. Uh, you know, 
and it's just it's exciting. The more information you have, the more you're prepared for whatever you know. And integrate it. They help. The reason part of Operation it. Paperclip was to bring the artists over to create musicals and plays and folklore and folk stories that with there were a whole bunch when world war ii ended their prisoners of war became slaves that got shipped all over the united states essentially i think some weird reason at the was it vienna or um there was some very odd happenstance if you if you go back into the end of world war ii but about like pop project paper clip or something? culture right. that, that can be appreciated <laughs> that feels authentic that feels natural that's not we're not on here pushing pfizer so watching the pentaveret again this is just one of these things that's an interesting coincidence and it makes me laugh and then we move on to the next but shiza we know means shit and and and, and there's a couple other german words that end in isa that are just kind of nasty and, and fiza actually means nasty so they're over there and they think the Americans are crazy. We have months called October and November that are not the te- that are not the eighth and ninth months. Explain that to me. Explain that to any rational human being that grow up spoken a Latin romance language and then you know, the world exists. Now this is called idiocracy. We've arrived, you know. So um, there should be 13 it's our job months to just find removed. the coincidences and try to giggle at them, I think. We do need 13 months and 13 minutes. Guys, I'm gonna. I'm yes, gonna, bro. Get out I'm, of here, man. I'm going to cut this up. Let me just really quickly do the right thing and share a link here to the Jake Parsons 100th Monkey. 100th Monkey, 100th Monkey, 100th Monkey. Yes, Everybody that's remember. That's my backup one. My main one is 100th Monkey Jake Parsons because that's the one that I'll be putting on. Now I'm uploading videos. My main one is, oh my, you got to solve a puzzle piece. They don't dude. want you to know what I'm doing here. Robots baby. definitely can next, do that. Next the time Andreas down, has you on, I'll try to cultivate down, your most recent down, hits on third back. So you can play them in your intro. One you know, of those so. with the short hair. But they've they've gotten rid of your channels, bruh. Like what? Yeah, one of those the, with the short hair. But it's got not even Not that less... one. Wait, no, none of those are mine. Yeah, those none of these. Dude. Yeah, dude. Um, yeah, they, the they're, they're, they're... they're trying to hide it. I'll, yeah, I have a log into no my thing. There's no spaces in there, but he's got whatever. like a lot more followers than any of these people. So they're like, "Did you yeah, mean anybody uh, else? Is your channel in trouble right now? Is that the deal?" Look at this monkey. He didn't even spell it right. Oh Do it one gosh. word. Just just put one hundredth monkey Jake Parsons one word. Okay. It's the only one that they want me to. Come it's up like with. when they make the fake That's version crazy, of the Pixar dude. movies, and it's like. Karate Panda instead of Kung Fu Panda, and they still sell five thousand copies on Amazon because people don't realize that they're watching the knockoff. I'm gonna I'm gonna jack the link from the internet, but guys, sign up for his backup yeah, channel without too. Without those tattoos cause... and those dimples and that tan, I mean, it's not him. We gotta gotta yeah. go right to the. But source. we'll we'll they're get favors. the yeah man. We'll get the right link in the description below in a minute, and in general, you can find his six thousand person backup channel, which is a good start, but. Yeah, he's got a lot of stuff going on. So, of course, they're trying yeah, to shut him got down. Like 150,000 or something. But right. I already picked this avatar, you fakers. This is my consciousness body that I chose in this matrix. You <laughs> can't have it. Right. And, dude, Mac, as we're calling Steph and Kalen here tonight. Uh, I drop bits. I drop bits. Dude, thank you <laughs> very much. Steven, Steven Crowder bits. But anyway, we're going to we're going to do it again. It's going to be cool. We'll talk more about insectoids taking over the world. And uh, oh, yeah. And also, I think we're going to get I, I might have Jake, you and uh, Brittany, the truth fairy talk with me at some point about TikTok scandals, because she also puts up the truth fairy puts out a lot of good videos on, on truth on the Internet, on TikTok that are getting uh, the same problem as you, that they'll it just change the world. There's a bunch of react faces, people with their face right next to like, wow, look at I never knew that this world was filled with so many examples of fake news where they're saying the exact same script for 30 different channels. But then they'll take the video down and they'll take the channel down and then they'll blacklist and hide it. And they're like, why can't you just shake your butt like everybody else? So, so not to launch the conversation, but tying directly into what you're saying, if you're giving people things, their homework to look up, the interesting things that you've never heard of before specifically tying the obscene and the censored to the um the secret knowledge that uh, it was vbd oh yeah I mean, seems hid- he said it is hidden I said alistair obscene. crowley it didn't even hidden. like satanism he just but, did it so he could pretend to be obscene so that people would you know think his secrets were you know they wouldn't look for him that was his official story right so jean-jacques not cousteau but jean-jacques Lucot, and i think it's almost like liquor l-e-q-u-e <laughs> but he he has a bunch of engravings of massive architectural technological contraptions and then he also has a set of pornographic obscene images 
and they're both in the same room hidden away in the basement of the Vatican. And the nice. idea is he knew that the technological secrets he might get in trouble for. So he's just being, he, he got himself censored on purpose so that it would be preserved through time. A lot of the really? Star Force, the layout is, you know, it's a way to preserve. Plus some women are UFOs. So, all right. Love you guys. Take care. Later, bro. Thank you, Andreas. Dude, thanks for having me, man. Nice to meet you, Mac. Next time. <laughs> Hey, everybody, tune in to Reason Tartarian. Reason Tartarian. Reason Tartarian.
Hey, everybody, tune in to Recent Tartarians. Recent Tartarians. Recent Tartarians.